what's up my nakama welcome to another episode of the channel tasters podcast i'm straw hat j and of course i am joined by my entire crew tonight we have cotton candy lover brian and black leg tony and of course last but certainly not least fire fist cap I feel like we should have sake cups here or something. Uh, uh, yeah. She feels more appropriate. Uh, if only we like had. Uh, no, uh. no, I don't think. No, we're all, we're all over twenty one, and the the, the channels, the, the, all the videos are labeled uh, eighteen or over. So it wouldn't be mm-hmm. TOS. Come pie. Come pie. Come All right. <laughs> So, we are here to talk about the One Piece live action series from Tomorrow Studios and Netflix. Oh my goodness, was this a ride and a half. So, no kidding. We've got half of the panel who are completely One Piece blind, aside from like a smattering of episodes. And then we have two hardcore One Piece fans who read the manga regularly on our Shonen Jump apps. Only two ninety nine. Yeah, it's two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Yep. Very much worth it. Definitely Not worth it. Hundred percent. Nice. So, but willing to be paid. Oh yeah. Wish it hit me up. Seriously, seriously, for real. Like I, I, I know, I know y'all look, look. I know y'all look for brand ambassadors. I would chill One Piece for free, <laughs> but if you pay me, I'll chill even harder. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, let this is going to be exciting. I have been I've been waiting for this. I even didn't shave so I could have more of more of my mustache at full power. <laughs> so yeah, this is going this is going to be a fun time. But if, if but, anything. Before we jump into tangents galore and all all that funness, we're going to go ahead and start by jumping right into the news with Brian. Okay, people, so we're going to keep it quick, but... Uh... Little weird tidbits that happened this last week that I thought I'd include. First of all, have you guys ever heard of the video game Stray? Yeah, the cat one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You play the evil robots. Uh, They are making that into an animated movie. That seems like it could be fun. That could work, yeah. Okay. I mean, it was pretty much already an animated movie, but go off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... At least you're not the one controlling a goddamn cat, you know? You know what? That's fair. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, talking about another anime-related thing. Uh, new announcement from Pokemon. Okay. They are doing a live-action uh, J-drama, but with a twist. Okay. It's set in our world, the real world. So, how is it Pokemon if it's the real world? Basically, is it like, is it a, is it like a VGC J drama? Yeah. Uh, no, it's a it's a translated to English. The name is uh, I think Adventure in My Pocket, something along the lines of that. And basically, what it's about is it's about a woman who's moved to the big city, takes a corporate job, is not feeling it until she gets a package from her mom, which is her old Game Boy Color with her Pokemon Red in it. And it helps. Okay, so this is just Pokemon related. It's not an actual, like, Pokemon property. Okay. Yes. But it is being made by the Pokemon people. Yep. I mean, not okay. to personal, but if it's about some Christmas cake office lady rediscovering the joys of her youth, it might be fun to watch. Yeah, those type of those types of J uh, dramas are usually interesting. I mean, especially because since you know you say oh, Game man. Boy I Color, mean, I, hope, I hope there's like a uh, like a thing in the office where there's like the where there's like the quiet 
nice guy and then there's like his like brash rival and she kind of like overlays red oh, and blue man. on them yeah red and blue <laughs> oh that that would be great if she if she has if she great. has dream sequences where she replaces people in her life with pokemon characters that would be hilarious yeah because um. i've actually heard about this uh because a lot of the poketubers talk about this changely so mm -hmm. It, it's just from the sounds of it, it's going to be very much like your typical J-drama, but it's just going to be connected to Pokemon just to relive your childhood, yeah, as it'll, it were. It'll, it'll, be, it'll, be somebody, it'll be somebody our age, because they said Game Boy Color and Red. Oh, yeah. So, you know, hashtag uh, relatable, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they already announced the lead. I forgot her name now, but she's a former idol. I mean, that's all. All, all Jap former like, idol. Don't, don't, Ninety percent. Are, are you a yeah. Tokusatsu alum among the male cast? Oh um, my god! Fair, fair. <laughs> I'm fair. not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. That's just how Japanese. No, I know. Yeah, that's Definitely. just Japanese casting. Uh, yeah. And uh, I double checked it. The official name, the American name, is "Fill Your Pocket with Adventure." Oh, that can be taken. So wrong. Oh my! Way out of context. Way out of context. Especially yeah, because there's I, a female I look lead. Across, I look across the panel here, and I don't even have to see Tony's face. I know. The, I know the expression. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then anyway, I, I moving guess on. It's one of those things that works better in, in translation. Japanese. Yeah. 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 But anyway, moving on to our last story. It's another small story, but. It involves a property that we haven't really talked about on this version of the cast, at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Sandman. Uh -huh. Oh, Sandman. Nice. Uh, it's a, in a rare instance for Netflix nowadays, it is actually getting a physical copy. Whoa. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to buy this. Physical. Uh, for, rare Ellie. physical media W. Right? 4K oh, no. Ultra HD Blu-ray and DVD. It will be released on November 28th. Oh man! Oh. Nice. I got. I, uh, I, I got. I got to get this. No kidding. Oh yeah. Um. This is, I think, one of the first Netflix that has been transported into physical form in a while, and I think it's pretty apt considering that this was. Uh, for those that weren't watching the Switch days, one where it got a near perfect score. Yep, I gave mm -hmm. it. A, I gave it a perfect score because the the, the the change the changes were the changes were all right. Like they weren't so egregious that I was like upset about it. It's like it was just small stuff here and there. My only major complaint is that I don't think Patton Oswalt's funny anymore, but. <laughs> He wasn't a terrible choice for the bird familiar. I mean, uh, what him He's just it? not. He just wouldn't be my personal choice. Uh, what, why? Why can't I remember his name right now? Michael. Michael. There you go. Um, he wasn't in it that much. Yeah, Matthew. It was Matthew. No. Matthew. 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 Yeah, yeah Matthew. Right. Like, right. It wasn't, it wasn't like, like this is like a nitpick. It's like, oh, hey, Pat Oswalt's great. Yeah. Not my Matthew, but, yeah. Um. There, for me personally, um, I didn't have a connection to the comics like the other guys did, so I gave it a nine point five, so almost perfect, but still. Yeah, um, I it. Also, that's cool. The we the weird like a animated bonus episode with the with the fucking Dream of Cats. I wasn't expecting them to actually include Dream of Cats. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, that's gonna be on the DVD too, nice. as well as some behind-the-scenes stuff. Ooh, I always love behind-the-scenes stuff. Oh hell yeah! But uh, that's it for the news. Nice. All right, done. So news. We are gonna go ahead and jump straight into screen time. The segment of the podcast where we talk about the different pieces of media that we've consumed in between podcast episodes. I'll go ahead and start. So. Some One Piece related stuff. I watched episode of East Blue to, mm -hmm. a, as a kind of comparison piece. It's like, okay, this is what Toei made as the truncated version of East Blue. Let's compare it to the Netflix one. So watch that. Um, I ended up 
play uh i ended up finally uh finishing uh like a dragon ishin mm -hmm. beat the secret boss so many sub stories but the sub stories are always the best part um, oh yeah oh what else is there oh and i uh i listened to olivia rodriguez new album uh it was all right i like more i like the hot more high energy pop punk stuff she does on the album the slow songs I didn't really care for, but maybe I just wasn't in a slow song mood the day I listened to it. So mm -hmm. I might have to go back yeah. and give it a listen. But it was all right. But you can tell that uh, she's, because uh, I listened to it too, you can tell that uh, she definitely takes some time to learn more production. Oh, yeah. She, uh, I, I think she even mentioned that she's going to school for it. So that's dope. Oh, yeah. She did. That's awesome. That's why... That's why uh, she's been kind of absent from anything was because she took time during the coof and then onward to uh, take virtual classes. Well, good for her. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty much it for me. Always uh -oh. good for self-betterment. Let's go ahead mm -hmm. and jump to Brian. Brian, what pieces of media have you consumed in between podcast episodes? Well, um, to pick up from last time, I uh, finished Interview with a Vampire. Nice. Ah, classic. In, the the new TV show. Oh. Yeah, um, starring uh, Grey Worm from uh, Game of Thrones. As Louis. And, uh, those are, those are some big shoes to fill. Yeah, they are. Oh. But I've, heard, I've heard good things about this show, though. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, you, uh, it's on Max uh, for a little bit. Because AMC's doing this weird this weird thing where they're like, for a limited uh like run, they're putting uh, their most popular shows on Max. Yep. So, you know, if anybody wants to check it out and they have Max, it's up there. I think it's up until around Halloween time they're taking it away. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so I took that opportunity to finally watch that, and it was really good. Uh. Jacob Anderson, I believe that's his name. Yep. Does a really good job as Louie. Gets several monologues. Really good at it. You can oh, nice. tell you can tell the dueling like emotions within him. And since this is 2023 as of talking and 2022, I think, when they made it, it definitely takes advantage of the fact of all the gore and the effects and stuff. And you can really tell how someone would fall f for Lestat, but also this Lestat is also very terrifying I mean, when he wants to be. If you, if you, as, if you read the book. should be. Yeah, I was going to say, if you read yeah. the book, he is absolutely terrifying. And I haven't one read of the, the book, but I did watch the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, and the with, movie's great too. And also, also uh, Lestat is one of the most charismatic individuals that uh, Anne Rice has yeah. ever created. Also, so, fun fact: uh, I, I feel like I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. That movie was Kirsten Dunst's first big break as the yeah. as the chi as the lolly vampire. So her first Claudia. kiss was with Brad Pitt. As like a six, and, like a six year old, and uh, in this one they include her character, but she's fourteen, so it's gross, but still, but not as gross. Also, uh, just a minor spoiler alert: mm -hmm. there's nothing romantic with her character and Louis and Lestat. All right, it's very parental because that was the yes. point of that of her turn yeah yeah because yeah. yes. because they wanted they wanted to have their own kid and the way they do that scene is really good and i really like the show as a whole and i was surprised i was wondering how they were going to continue it past one season and uh i'll just say they found a way uh I th well, I mean, there are multiple, also, there are multiple books, aren't there? Like, isn't Queen yeah, of the Dan are... part of the series as well? Yeah, I, I hear you. I didn't know that. 
like I said, my only exposure to this franchise was the movie. Um, but anyway, I've already talked about the show at Nauseam last time. Um, uh, I also watched the first two episodes oh, of the new season of Lower Decks, continuing to really like it. Uh, they do this cool thing where the Enterprise herself makes a cameo. None of the crew does. But we do get to see where the Enterprise is within the uh, time frame of the show. And they make a callback to an obscure plot line with uh, Voyager. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. That was really cool. Um, Funny how I'm starting to do weekly stuff again, but with a show that can't really talk about. Hey, look, sometimes sometimes you need you need a like a palate cleanser as a weekly show. Like Yeah. Uh, uh also mm-hmm. it was put on Netflix, so I finally so I did uh watch uh You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah. Uh-huh. How was it? Actually surprisingly really good. Um hmm. there there were some bit characters and one specific side character that I really did not like. I mean, but that, overall, I was, it, gonna, I was gonna say that's a Sandler movie, though. Sandler always yeah. has to have at least one obnoxious character. In oh yeah, and in this one, it's a DJ. Ah, uh, I'll just say that a bat mitzvah DJ. Well, to be fair, most but, uh, movies at most gatherings could be real just obnoxious a-holes yeah oh yeah but uh overall i did really like it it it's a coming of age movie it's not a uh it's not a uh like specifically a rom-com it's not a like to all the boys i loved and all that Mm -hmm. it's more of just a coming of age story and in a part that we don't really explore which is not only uh, coming of age for a Jewish kid, coming of age of a Jewish female kid, mm-hmm. a girl. You don't really see that that often. And um, Sandler was really good as the dad. He got some real chuckles out of me, especially going back and forth with his youngest, who plays the lead. And she does a really good job. She kind of reminds me of a uh, Jewish uh, Gen Alpha version of uh, Riley from uh, Boy Meets World. Oh, nice. Which which is funny because this is directed by the same woman who directed Crush, which was a coming-of-age movie starring the actress who played Riley. Oh, cool. Okay. But uh, Sandler's older daughter is also in it, but as like the older sister, mm-hmm. and she does a really good job. Luis Guzman is in it, kind of, but his character's underutilized and kind of wasted a bit. Yeah. But yeah. overall, I did I did like the movie, and I think if I were to rate it one out of ten, ten, I'd give it a seven. Okay, solid. It's the funniest. It's the funniest Happy Gilmore and Adam Sandler movie I've seen in a while. Happy Madison. Happy Gilmore is the movie. I did it again. Fuck. And the last thing is, I just recently started. I'm only a couple episodes in to uh, Money Heist. Oh, La Casa de Papel. Yes, because um, I saw a thing saying that uh, in uh, December mm-hmm. they're going to be releasing a new show called Money Heist Berlin. Interesting. A prequel. Nice about Berlin. I really, I really, I really like La Casa de Papel. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a great show. I fell off of it after season three, but not because it was bad. It was just because I forgot when it was coming back, and I never bothered to check or add it to my list on Netflix. I hear you. Also, um, there are only five parts. Um. And uh, apparently there's also a different spinoff hmm. called uh, Money Heist Korea. Interesting. Oh, side note. Is the dub any good? I just watch it, I just watch it in original audio because, you know, duh. I watch, I've been watching it in the dub, and the dub's been pretty good. 
it especially helps that uh, there's the narration, so the narration kind of takes over sometimes, and so that helps. Okay. Cool. So is that it for you, Brian? Okay, cool. We'll yep. go ahead, we'll go ahead and jump to Cap. Cap, what have you uh, what have you been checking out recently in terms of like different media and stuff? Up, oh, your audio's out. There we go. Yep, there it Got is. Got the unpluggable microphone. Ah, uh, okay. Got jostled. Anyway, um, so I have been absconded into the world of Baldur's Gate three. Nice. That's a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I've heard. that's that's probably the most interactable is not the right word, but it's the only thing I can think of to say. Like, yeah, I've heard about that. It's it's like an isometric Deus Ex game what? in the amount of stuff you can just do. Interesting. Like thing things function with logic and physics. Nice. But also the world's ready for it. The world has answers to your dumb bullshit. Cool. Ooh. And it's got no matter what you do, it's ready. Like I'm playing a paladin. It's got a bunch of paladin options if you play as a different class. Like, there's, there's nothing... There's no anemic quality to it. Everything you do is taken into account. Cool. Your character's race, your character's class, your character's actions. Oh, that's at awesome. least so far. Um, yeah. And you and... A bunch of weird things, like... You can put a, you can put a keg of... Of, like, uh, black powder... Mm -hmm. in a sphere of silence blow it up and no one will react because it exploded in a sphere of silence oh shit that's hilarious so you can do things like that you can um you can complete quests before people ask them to go back to them tell them you did it and they'll be like oh hey thanks and you can oh that's handy and that's that's not even talking about the special dark urge character option oh yeah where, uh it is it is not a character uh, it is not a path for those who are squeamish or those who are excessively who hold justice exclusive in their heart because <laughs> it's not called dark urge because you like to go buy ice cream for old ladies gotcha. it's called dark urge because you have an irresistible urge to punt that adorable squirrel against a tree and see the cool splatter the blood makes. How cool is the oh, splatter? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. But wow. it's, it's one of those things where you, like, you get special narration things, like, uh, not to spoil it, but, like, in the very beginning, uh -huh. you run across a druid with a snake familiar. And it's like, you don't remember why, but you do know the venom of that snake poison is almost instantly lethal. You should make that child get bitten by the snake. That'd be really funny. Oh, shit. Like, these are just, it's just stuff like the narrator says that it is your internal monologue. Mm -hmm. And it, it's dark and it's fun. Uh, the other thing I've been up with is Armored Core 6? Oh, Five. shit. 5? No, armored six. Core. The new yeah. Armored Core yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fires of Rubicon, right? Yep. Fires of the Rubicon. Nice. On the PS5. Nice. And it is a pretty game that is very fast-paced and very unforgiving. Yeah, I've seen, I've but... seen everybody, I've seen everybody and their mom get filtered. Oh, yeah. It it is a it is a great filter game. Like if you don't figure out what you're doing right, you'll get filtered. Like even by weird innocuous stuff that isn't like a filter. Yep. Like I got I got caught up on a boss because I just you know couldn't adjust my playstyle properly because I was using weapons that caused me to lag out. 
I, l I, like, like, I like that, like, the dynamic movement is such a key part of combat in Armored Core from what I've seen. Oh, don't I mean, stop. It, it's, always, it's always been, because I've played previous Armored Core games, but, oh, yeah. like, this one, it's just, it's crazy. This one is a game that I highly suggest if you have a prescription for brain pills. <laughs> brain pills if you want to play armor core because you're going to need that focus all right will do it's fast it's like taking no yeah yep oh yeah no like take your adderall take your ritalin yep only if you have a prescription from a doctor obviously don't, don't try and street source it obviously all right cool but yeah fantastic video games uh, they've been pretty much absorbing my life outside of doing dumb tabletop stuff, but yeah. Nice. I've seen a lot of clips from Baller's Gate and damn. Oh, they're... It's... It, you can watch it, but I recommend playing it because it's so much more intense when it's your actions that cause these things to happen. Oh, yeah. I realize that, but also do not oh, have yeah. a PS5 and my only computer is a Mac laptop. Ooh. Oh, and you know what the goofy fact? Uh, my coworker who plays a lot of uh, PS5 games, she's uh -huh. mentioned to me, "Have you been playing uh, Baldur's Gate 3? I'm like, "No." It's like, I have a PS4. It's like, "Oh, oh, you're missing out." She thanks. Man, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's it, it's it, worth it's it, like, if you if you can play it, it's worth getting, it's worth trying out. Yeah, I've heard it kind of it unfortunately peters out in the third act, but I mean that's most games. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But from what I've played through so far, it's been fun, fun, nice. fun. Nice. So. Tony, what about you, man? What have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? Well, other than just making sure I'm up to date on a uh, Paradox Mega campaign focused on uh, Sardinia at Corsica that I mentioned last week. Mm -hmm. uh, I started playing, as of uh, the recording of this episode, uh, Death Stranding? Oh, the the fucking ah, the the, the strand uh, type game. Are you are you talking about the weird delivery game that Kojima Norman made? Reedus. Yeah, yeah. Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus Amazon Delivery Man Supreme. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So far, it's been a a real confusing moment because when I'm actually on my couch, some things can be in sight but well, when well, it comes to the turn button i actually have to like what the fuck is that welcome to kojima getting to be full kojima with no restrictions yep it, it's enjoy enjoy the adventures of Heartman. die hard man i i've the name the name of that individual is hysterical to me also as of this recording i'm just it sitting it only gets very... worse yep oh I, I completed the game. The name puns only get worse the deeper you get into the game. And oh. you start getting emails that where they explain their own backstories to you. Oh. Oh, man. So, is it a level oh. of to make me physically cringe from pain? Oh? Yeah, because there are levels that I can tolerate. Mm -hmm. uh, I hang out with a master of punnage as it were listen man puns are an art okay look so mm -hmm. so there's there's what the there's there's western puns and there's eastern puns yeah so this mm. is what happens yeah. when you do japanese style wordplay puns in english oh no oh it's it's that kind of pain oh, oh dear no God. oh well, no like that's why you have characters like die hard man I get I, who's I, man, the I was... president of America, and the uh, the kind and generous heart man, because mm -hmm. he's got a big heart, man. Oof. Um, oh, man. Yeah, I think he also does like heart surgery or something. 
Um, and, uh, oh, what is it? Like, the the main character's name is, like, something Bridges. It's, uh, Sam. Because he brings people to... Sam, Sam, Porter, Sam Bridges. Porter Bridges. Wow. Uncle Sam, the porter who builds bridges between people. Wow. Because he's American. Uh, we're working. That's... We're we're working on we're working on levels of. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely Japanese puns. I I I've read yeah. I've, I've read enough One Piece to recognize Japanese pun styles. Yeah, these are all but... these are all Japanese name puns, but in English. So it's like. Because usually others like, oh, hey, if you read the kanji this way, it explains the character's personality. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. But it's it's got that layer of of mysticism peeled back because you're not reading the kanji a different way. You're literally interpreting what the name means. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but by far yeah. my, my favorite is Dead Man because it reminds me of the DC superhero. And it's also Guillermo del Toro. Oh, oh yeah, cool. Guillermo del Toro's Dead Man. Cool. The Dead Man, it, Austin Brand. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Makes me happy. <laughs> but also, uh, I caught a few bits of Pokemon related media myself. Watched the second part of the uh, Arceus Chronicles that's on yep. Netflix. Mm -hmm. Loved. Loved that because. The whole Heatran trying to destroy things because Team Galactic got big sad over not seeing Cyrus because he was sent to some other dimension. Looks in like you're the, going to the Realm, Jimbo. <laughs> yep. But then I also watched uh, Road to uh, uh, Road to po uh, the Western one. It's basically the small mini series. Basically, yeah, yeah. Ash's um, final hurrah. Yeah, the Ashes Fire oh, World Tour. Was... Yeah, mm -hmm. with Brock so, with Brock and Misty, right? Actually, it initially starts with uh, an odd little companion that we haven't seen since Genova. Oh no! A certain connoisseur. Okay, as it were. Okay, it's the cool one. It, it's 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 the it's 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 fucking uh, silent. Yeah, I like Silas. I thought you were gonna say Iris, and I was like, oh, never mind. No, oh no, seen... not man! We've I, I... Seen we've Silent. seen Iris. Been yeah, cup. I know, but, is... but like we, all, she only had the battle. We didn't have to like have prolonged social interaction with Iris. Actually, but we've you seen don't, you don't her... like you don't like the clingy feral child. No, <laughs> she she actually had the glow up because uh, since I've watched pretty much all of Journeys. Mm -hmm. I can definitely say that in her characterization, she has grown into a powerful I, champion in I her mean, own right. Champion Iris was always cooler than regular Iris. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And also, anticipating the release of uh, the Teal Mask DLC for Scarlet and Violet. Oh, uh, featuring new best girl Perrin. Yes. If you, haven't, if you haven't seen new best girl Perrin... Mm -hmm. Google yourself new best girl parent or just parent. I'm gonna have to yeah. look that up because because <laughs> if you're if you're a fan of Pokemon Arceus and mm -hmm. uh, oh I am blanking on the guy's name. Adamin. Yeah, Adamin. Oh man, mm -hmm. uh, welcome to uh, girl Adamin. Yes. Yep. Finally. So we have, our our timeline has been blessed by girl Adamin. <laughs> yes. Yep. In a crop top. So Oh, Just to give you oh. a okay. uh -huh. allow me to explain to you her deal in okay. the teal mask. Uh -huh. She's gone. She has come to Kitakami while you're on your uh, summer exchange tour. Uh huh. To this uh, nebulous Japanese small town region. Mm -hmm. She is looking for a certain Pokemon in the timeless woods. That is somehow connected to her ancestor. From Hisui. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, cool. Since uh, a lot of the teal mass was leaked wide open, we know all the new mons. We know the location names. Nothing on the story. Not quite yet. 
I'm but, uh, I'm still debating on whether to get the DLC or not. But here's the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we here uh, in the Americas are going to be getting it early. Oh, that's a first. So, here's the uh, here's the fun part. Uh, the release schedule uh, with the downloads is going to be sometime th later this evening hmm. in, uh, like, the overall Western time for us, because oh, cool. they just kind of rope in because that's a nebulous thing. Mm -hmm. Europe gets after us, and then other countries after Europe, and then Japan just releases on the same day at, like, some point in the later afternoon. Mm-hmm for them so we're going to be getting it later this evening on the 12th as of this oh. recording oh shit like around 10 or so in the evening oh 10 your time no not oh, necessarily nice. it's oh. it's a nebulous later like later 10 o'clock like right. 10 p.m it's a nebulous ten o'clock. I, I they think, didn't I, say which time zone. I figured. I exactly. figured they go off west coast so that east coasters don't spoil it for west coast people because they're in you know the worst area of the country. Yeah, they just don't never really specified it, but they just said a nebulous for just in the Americas, ten p.m. All right, cool. Uh, ten p.m. in the Grand Unified American Time Zone that we all operate under. Let me uh, uh I let me know if it yeah. actually has enough gameplay to warrant buying. Cause every time I bought previous DLC, it's been nothing. Yeah, well, the Isle of Armor DLC was a little bit underwhelming. Yeah, that that's the that's, as, as much as I like Urshifu, it wasn't yeah worth the whole thing. That's the that's the whole reason I I backed away from this one in particular. Well, for me, I just kind of figured. They're going to be introducing a lot more locations to just kind of have fun things to do, like mm. uh, being actually alter your stats with a admittedly kind of lame looking minigame where you just have to pop balloons with your respective oh. ride ons. Oh, so is it so is this the so th this is the equivalent of that uh, fucking that cheap. What is that? What was that cheap mechanic? Pokemon of me where you where you like you know nintendogs your pokemon and you get like cheap bonuses like increased oh crit yeah chance. like you no 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 i think that's the camping mini game oh that's the camping um, mini game okay i think yeah, this so... one is like that uh uh in x and y where you had that weird like 3d ish soccer mini game to oh. boost your evs oh yeah <laughs> Lochi corresponding with the different uh, stats of a Pokemon, like their okay, speed, so, attack. And all okay, that so stuff. this is EV training. Interesting. Yes, but you have to pop balloons on your respective Rhydons. Well, when now, I say Rhydons, I mean Core or Mirai. Now, now that they're uh, now that they're fucking uh, and now now that there's an actual uh, EG, uh EV training mini game, the competitive players are going to exploit the hell out of that. Yep, and that's also what we you always get, do. There's I also a photography mini game that's connected to Perrin. Okay. Now, which, now I'm just imagining the uh, the, the uh, photography sub story in Yakus. And you also get a basically Pokemon retelling of the story of Momotaro, oh, or like cool. the main story of Kitami, with the loyal three, Okie Doki. Monkey Dory and Fezzendipity. Okay, makes sense. As the three, as a new trio of legendaries, combating against Ogre Pond, the other legendary of this uh, DLC, also including new Pokemon that, since Jay is a bit behind, I will not say until it's fully released. So who's Peach mm -hmm. Boy? Okay. Who's Peach Boy in this story? I will not say. Okay. That's because that is a bit of a leak, and I'm not going to disclose that stuff. All right. Cool. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Is that it? so? Is that it for you, Tony? That that is pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. So 
we're going to roll right into trailer talk. Brian has curated some trailers for us to react to and through the magic of editing we'll come back after this short information and give our quick thoughts on these trailers. So Brian, tell the folks at home what we will be checking out this week. Well, uh, due to the fact that we're only doing three trailers, there are some trailers that I had to keep out. So if you notice a trailer or two that came out this week that isn't in here, uh, I had to do it to the wayside, especially because all three of the trailers that we do have are trailers that we particularly were anticipating. Mm -hmm. uh, first is The Fall of the House of Usher. Nice. Which is yeah. the Mike Flanagan's last Netflix show before he goes over to Amazon. He did The House of Fawn and Kill and The House of Bly Manor, uh, Midnight Club and Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass was kind of meh, but, you know. Yeah. They can't yeah. all be winners. But uh, this, one, this one is uh, based on Edgar Allan Poe short story of the yeah. same name. Figured. Hmm. Okay. Also, also Jay, mm -hmm. we got a, uh, what looks to be, because I hadn't watched it yet, an actual trailer with, like, actual fight scenes of uh, solo leveling. Oh, okay. shit. Let's go. And, and then... Sorry, Brian. It was just a little nugget of information that I learned recently about solo leveling, which is very fascinating. Oh, uh, what's that? Apparently, they're going to be using... Uh, depending on the dub, because the Japanese dub has two different options for names. Mm -hmm. They're going to use the Japanese light novel names in one uh, version of the dub, and then the Korean names of the characters in another. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Interesting. But yeah. the last one is, um, again, continuing, uh, continuing um, this thing of ending with a uh, giant monster, uh, Monarch, the, t the upcoming ITV show. Mm. Oh, cool. Uh, based in the... Uh, legendary Godzilla King Kong world uh, starring uh, Kurt Russell and in flashbacks, Wyatt Russell. I'm not going to lie to you. When you said Monarch for a split second, I was like, oh my God, did they finally give this man a spinoff? Are we finally getting <laughs> a Monarch fucking show? I would love to see the Monarch and Dr. Mrs. The Monarch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but also this seems pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, did you watch the, the I, Venture I, Bros? I did. I movie? did. It was great. It was. I enjoyed it a lot. It also answered a lot of questions that I had. It, it answered questions I didn't know I had. Yep. Or questions that I had forgotten because it's been a while since I watched the last season. Same. <laughs> All right. So. We will be back after this short intermission with our thoughts on these trailers. We'll see you guys in a sec. And we're back. All right. So all solid trailers this week, Brian. Good job on that one. So let's go through. Let's just have the entire panel kind of discuss what we thought about the different trailers. Uh, so Fall of the House of Usher looks really interesting and definitely a good one for spooky season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like, and, I'm really looking forward to seeing that one, especially just how it's shot. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Let's see if you have some real good, like, just classic horror work. Cause, and Because there's, there's this really cool thing with uh, Haunting of the Hill House. If you watch any of those episodes and you pause it at any time, you can see a ghost in the frame. Oh, really? Yep. Just in the background, and they don't call attention to it. Yep. Yeah, Flanagan as a uh, director is a bit of a master to just the small details when it comes to a lot of the prep, the projects that he's worked on. I mean, oh, yeah. when he did, I, one, by far one of my favorite things that he's ever done is to his, uh, his adaptation of Dr. Sleep. 
Oh, no, and I've seen that. Yeah, his doctor. Yeah, the Doctor Sleep movie was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seeing how well he did with a King adaptation and going further back into the annals of horror literature with Poe, seeing what he can do with that kind of source material has me really fascinated. And just from the trailer alone, it's something that I would definitely enjoy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, one of my favorites from him is, I think, his first uh, feature length which was a movie called Hush. Oh, that, that's that's oh, yeah. that's that's the one with the mute girl and the home invasion. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. That, I, which, yeah, that's a really good movie. Which, uh, by the way, for those who don't know, that's his IRL wife. Hmm. Oh, who, guy. who also was a uh, Theo in a. Uh, yep. In uh, Hill House. Of Hill House. Yep. And Best played character. a special role in Blind Manor. I'll just say that. Yeah, that's a spoiler. We do have that episode in the archives, uh, Spotify people. So check that one out. Yep. I know we at least have um, Midnight Club. We have Midnight Club and we have, I know we have Blind Manor. I don't know if we had Hill House. Um, But yeah, de we have two of them. And we skipped Midnight Mass because I told Brian it was meh. And at yeah. some point, because I was impressed by one King adaptation, I wanted to see another that he did, uh, Gerald's Game. Yeah, he was the one that directed Gerald's Game. Is Gerald's, ga is Gerald's Game the one where the, 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 the guy is tied to the bed? Yep. Uh, so, married couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just making sure, because I've seen that movie. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the lady was uh, handcuffed to the bed, and the oh, guy... Oh, a lady. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, he's also got another King adaptation coming up. I forgot the name of it now, but uh, it's going to be starring Hiddleston, and uh, Hamill's going to be playing his father. Well, I mean, Hiddleston has a very creepy face. Like, him, Matt Smith, like... There are particular actors with very creepy facial structures. Yeah, it's kind of... Oh, uh... Matt Smith is a human skeleton that has no eyebrows. Yeah. And you forget he has cool. you forget he has no eyebrows until you take a second look and realize, oh, hey, that guy's no. Cro-Magnon. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, no offense to the guy. No. But tell him, he, he's got man. a Cro-Magnon skull. He, def he definitely has Super Saiyan 3 forehead going on. <laughs> yeah. definitely tell that level of just just that vibe that you get from him when you see him in house of the dragon i mean he, he has perfect targaryen face and same with a character right. that we'll talk about in one piece in a second oh yeah, yeah. but uh but uh <laughs> fall house of usher looks looks good uh solo leveling Looks real good. Oh, that, that uh, animation is so crisp. I, like, am... I I've heard good things about solo leveling. I just never really took the time to check it out. But no, it's, dude, it, it's I great. might check out this anime. It's definitely, it's great. Yeah, definitely. I would I would recommend either either read uh, like if you, if the anime gets you interested, uh, mm -hmm. if you have if you're in if you're down for more of a time commitment, read the light novel because the light novel the light novel is finished. Yep. Uh, but uh, the manhwa is still going on right now, and uh, you know it's really pretty, full color yep. because Koreans do all their stuff in full color. Uh, well, it's it's easy. It's easier because they they just do like the the like phone. Yep. Phone format. Uh, yeah. Digital long thing. Yep. Yep. So I mean, the things that they do gorgeous. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, for yeah, sure. Because uh, I I read a really really good one before. Uh, uh, called uh, Burning Effect. Oh, nice. Mm. But that one, that one was just black and white with splashes of color where it was more meaningful. Oh, cool. Um, so, like... Oh, yeah. No, no, uh, no, not, to, not to distract, because we got a yeah, yeah. topic. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Uh, so, the the last one. Monarch. All right, it's not a Venture Brothers spinoff, but it still looks pretty fucking cool. It could be. Look, don't give, oh, yeah. don't don't do that, Cap. Don't give me hope. Mm. 
<laughs> oh, I couldn't help myself. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, we got your. You got Kurt Russell, who's like the the head of a uh, weird science thing, who isn't a time traveler, but. I guess we're gonna get like flashbacks, and he set up a whole like monster hunter organization all throughout, like yeah, all throughout time. So he, they they're the ones that deal directly with the kaiju. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it looks, and, it looks uh, pretty cool. And we got his son playing his younger self in the flashback scenes, and we've got yep. a primarily Asian cast. It looks like so. Mm-hmm. That's so, cool. So we're gonna oh, we're yeah. gonna see a lot of the big G probably. Yep. Yep. So that's and that's I cool. always love to see this wreck shop because. That's that man. And That's what like, he do. And, and you know, I, I said it while we were watching the trailer, but they have some like really dope, like Cloverfield ass shots. Uh, so I'm gonna throw out a wild speculation. Okay. Jet Jaguar. Oh <gasps> man. Well, that would be amazing they, if they... they got a lot of guys in suits. They got a big organization. They're in a space shuttle. Oh like, man! My 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 100 star shot for mm-hmm. bizarre cameo is that this whole thing is going to lead up to them uncovering Jet Jaguar. That would be I would dope as that. fuck. I would love that. Yeah, that but would be also. May or may not preclude the existence of Baby Rider. Oh man! Also, you mentioned this off camera, uh-huh. but Monarch does that have any connection to Mothra? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, moths, moths, moths butterflies. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. So it, it, it is. It is that like. Yeah. The, uh, the the symbol does have like almost look like butterfly wings, even though it's like yeah, a, a, like a sideways, or it looks like an infinity yeah. symbol or like an hourglass turned sideways yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of like infinity symbol, butterfly wings, mm-hmm. stuff going on. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Anyway, again, again, my my also, moonshot, my moonshot prediction, my. If I'm right, it's because I'm psychic. Huh. Is that this is all going to lead up to the existence of Jet Jaguar? Oh man! If yeah. it doesn't, oh man! What I would love yeah. it does. I fucking <laughs> called it. Yep. Time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Call we'll, back. We'll give you. We'll give you credit if it does. Yeah. When, when we do the happen. episode. When we do the episode. If you, if you were correct, you get to you get to say, all right, post the card to the timestamp. I fucking called it. Yeah. Um, also, uh, it's not in the trailer, but just mm-hmm. uh, apparently, um, Iris, movie Iris, is in it. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. She, um, she, she's been, she's been in, uh, she's been good in other stuff she's been in. So, you know, I'm she, not, I'm not what was the she in before her. that? She was she like was, in Snowfall. She, she was in Dope. She was in Dope. The, oh, Dope. Uh, the uh, the movie that really got Shamik Moore's career off the ground, she, and she, you know Shamik Moore, uh, I, I, uh, Shamik Moore was the one who ended up uh, voicing Miles Morales in the uh, Spider Verse movies. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, also, I can't find anything online, but that one guy looked like John Goodman in the trailer. It's probably John Goodman because John Goodman is involved. Was uh, was in. Uh, what you call it? Kong Skull. Cloverfield. Yeah, Cloverfield and Kong. Yeah, he was in Kong Skull Island. Yep. Yep. Oh, so it probably it's probably been a while since I've seen it. So it probably oh, yeah. is John Goodman. This, just as long as it doesn't have a uh, certain person. Mm. I mean, yeah, she's. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yep. Anyway. Anyway. So. Yeah, I would give you a high five. From across the internet, Cap, because just speaking from a fellow Toku fan, seeing a faux Ultraman in a Monarch would be just fantastic. Man, I I, I think that would be cool. Um, oh, yeah. I I didn't mention it on screen time, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it really briefly. I watched Shin Ultraman recently, and it was fucking awesome. If you got Prime, which a majority of you probably have Prime, go watch it. Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider, both on Amazon Prime, both by Hideki Anno, the legendary auteur, creator of anime's favorite sad boy get-in-the-robot anime, yep. Evangelion. Yep, yep, yep. 
definitely check it out but yeah those are the trailers uh let us know what you thought about them in the comments below hopefully you checked out that playlist brian curated that we have linked down there youtube people and now we are on to the main event <laughs> It is time to talk about One oh. Piece. <laughs> Wealth, fame, power. He had all these things and more. His name was Gold D. Rush. Ah, well, uh, 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 nope, nope, no, 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 nope, nope. I keep forgetting that that's not a thing yet. Ah. That's not a thing yet. His name is Gold Roger. So let's open. Let's talk. Let's just talk about the opening. Okay. Let's just talk about the opening. So, uh, Brian and Tony, you guys are completely unfamiliar with the One Piece world. Uh, this opening, you know, the job of a pilot episode is to establish the world and get people interested. How did you guys feel about that opening episode? We'll start with Brian. Oh, my bad, Tony. You you started talking, so we'll start with you. So, well, I was able to follow everything without knowing much about the world of One Piece and mm -hmm. how it kind of operates with its goofy shenanigans. I mean, I've always had a tendency of just kind of keeping track of how things kind of play out. The world building is just spectacular i mean and from the <laughs> scene of one piece oh, initially i already got an idea and a feel but just seeing it in this in a more live action setting it's like okay this i this mean is fun. world building is like crack to one piece fans because that is like oda's bread and butter oh yeah man like one piece <laughs> is the only showing an out there where the fandom goes more insane over newspaper articles more than actual fights. <laughs> Cuz let me tell you, whenever we get to see the World Economic Journal, it is a hype fest. Which uh, weird esoteric East Blue characters making a comeback this time? What's happening? What's happening in the random comic adventures of you which, know the Germa Double Six? The, the, did the they weird... mention Wapole Metal? Oh shit! Which, uh, <laughs> which uh, by the way, uh, speaking about the intro and all that, mm -hmm. I completely agree with Tony. By the way, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they're also kind of starting that already because. In that opening crowd of people, there's a lot of cameos. There is indeed. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about those when we get to us. Um, but yep. yes, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. Uh, not not as not all of them that I was expecting, but one of them in particular. I don't even know how they're gonna do that person. Yeah, like this was my big problem with One Piece. Is for those of you not familiar. One Piece is a bastion of non-typical character designs. Yep. Humans in One Piece range in size from three inches tall to... Th uh, how big is Orr? Is like 36 feet 30, tall? Yeah, Something 36 like that. feet. Yep, 36 feet. He yeah yeah he's he's like a few he's like a few meters tall, uh white like white beard white beard was eight white, feet tall, and white beard's still a human. Yep. So there's a variety of races in One Piece from like tiny fairy like people to giants and it's, everything yeah. in between. And then there, um, and then there's Oni, which is a subspecies of giant. It's a, it's a whole thing, yep. man. There's a there's, there's a whole. There, there's a whole but, D, D monster manual of things in One Piece, but even just like but, baseline human. Oh, but sorry, go on. I was just gonna say, uh, for the show at least, in the first episode, we just start off with Monkey D. Luffy, and all of this kind of like this first episode is about him and like rests all upon the actors. Uh, oh yeah. For ability sure. to carry the whole episode by himself. Mm -hmm. Definitely a trial by fire. Um, oh, yeah. 
Oh uh, yeah. I I mean, since we're since we're talking about him, I I gotta say this guy. This guy is Luffy in terms of mannerisms, in terms of personality. The dude's performance is really fucking strong. Uh, I've got a few a few nitpicks about it, but uh, I think those are more writing mistakes than his acting mistakes. Yeah. Um. He's he's a super solid Luffy. I was I was skeptical at first because Luffy's um. Luffy is a character that exists in a space. Of animation and comics. Yeah, it's a, it's a, and it's a weird tightrope, right? Because yeah. Luffy, Luffy is very earnest and blunt, and if you do that wrong, which can very easily be done, he could come off as very obnoxious. Yeah, but this, and this guy didn't. It, it, he didn't. At times, he did, but. <laughs> It didn't last for too Again, long. It's a, yeah. It's it's a hard thing to capture and he he really he really gave it his all. However though like, I Child Luffy, on the other hand. Ooh, well that's child actors, man. I mean, yeah, but yeah. Look, normally normally I would give that a pass if it wasn't for the fact that I have seen so many good child actors in the last like five or so years. That like you're not I, wrong. I can't let that go anymore because these kids today are really good actors. Yeah, if this was like and, a uh, '90s kid actor, he'd be good. But yeah. it's not. It's not and a the, '90s kid honest, actor anymore. Even in this show, mm -hmm. there are kid actors that are better. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Like um. Yeah, I think I think. Well, we'll get we'll yeah. get to the, we'll get to the great kid actor when we get to him. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be sure. towards yeah, the end, but, for sure. Uh, um, um, but no, kid, kid Luffy, um, probably the, probably the, the weakest part of the opening, but, uh, opening but, couple episodes. But oh. I do think that they set set up some good exposition with him and set up the world really well with him. Oh yeah, and uh, I love the little one on one that he had with the little seagull. Oh, the fact that they actually have the news coup in there. Was that so was... good? Oh man! It's... They got they they, they gave but... the seagull a little hat and everything. Yep, yep. It was it was awesome. Like, yeah. They, they could have cheaped out more than they did, and they didn't. And, and I and I, and I love and I love the reaction. Like the bird is just sitting there while he's like giving his whole life story, and the bird is just like, "So you gonna buy a paper, sir?" Or uh... <laughs> and Luffy just like, "Paper? I don't read." No, nope. all right. I'm you want to join my crew? I don't got money. Oh man! I got you a spot on my crew if you want it. Oh man! I already there, got there, a job, there, man. There's a fun, there's a fun inside baseball meme joke uh, that people have taken away from uh, Luffy's statement of ten men and a bird. Uh, it, uh, the 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 fan joke is that this confirms that a, a certain hawk person. Or falcon person is going to join the straw hats. Oh, uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a certain princess and her chocobo. Oh, I mean, that could also work. That could also work. Uh, but yeah. So tell me, tell me, tell me it's not a chocobo. It is a chocobo. And I'll call you a liar. It pretty much is a chocobo. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let's let's talk about the thing. Uh, like the thing that a lot of a lot of fans in particular, I I discovered, were very mixed to negative on, which is you know, Scottish Garp. I like it. I like it a lot. I, I can see why people don't like it. Yeah. But it just feels like it, it feels like Sean Connery mm -hmm. in his prime in a three piece suit. Oh, mm. yeah. And I okay, mean, let's go. And I mean, he like he has all the men. Liam, Liam Neeson for our younger viewers who don't exactly know uh, the great works of Mr. Sean Connery. Um, yeah, I am to, the last dragon. Me... To me, he felt like young, young Sean Connery with some sprinklings of Peter Capaldi. Man, like, he even... He Maybe even if he the, swore more. He even has the eating thing. Like, we always see him just going to town on these big-ass steaks. 
Oh man, it's great. I love yeah, it. No, it's it, so in character because they because awesome. they couldn't get like the One Piece like hilarious meat on the bone. Oh, the jo- the the oversized leg of lamb that Luffy's just always fucking munching yeah. on. Yeah. Yep. Um. So it, in, <laughs> so instead they decided uh, quantity. Yeah. Um. Which which is well, fine. those things have quantity. They're just like they're they're they're. It's called manga meat. It's a it's a cut of meat that doesn't exist in the real world. Yep. Where it's like a perfectly I've, I've tubular Yeah. Yeah. It bit it, of meat it, on like a femur. Yep. It it's yeah. it's crazy. But I think Garp, like, in my opinion, Garp was probably one of the best parts of the show. Um so I I appreciate them moving him from like surprise problem yeah. Yeah. to almost like a framing device for yeah. the east blue i thought i, I, I thought that was because a great, it, it a gives, it gives the east it. blue much needed uh uh what's the term it's a better pace like pacing it, it adds better stakes to the stuff and it adds mm-hmm. a bit more cohesion to all the yeah all, all the at, at, at the time of writing random encounters yeah because it's like uh you know we uh we we had a watch party in discord and we were we were talking about this as we were watching it um one piece as a manga especially in the east blue in the early chapters was a lot of okay and then this happens because it happened so like (laughs) you know this actually gives reasoning to a lot of the events and personally i think that the showing this like side of garp early will actually if they by some miracle of god make it to the summit war it will make his actions make a lot more sense and have a lot more impact now i I will raise the one major problem that having garp involved in this brings up mm-hmm. which is a a power level problem but only for people like us who are lost in the sauce of one piece yeah and and i i i, so, I get that complaint for sure so uh, like it, it 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 made a big problem with arlong mm-hmm. cuz Ar- arlong well this is this is a this is a much later problem but arlong is as as a villain the very literal big fish in a small pond. Yep. Like, that's his whole thing. That's the whole joke. He's got the biggest bounty in the East Blue, and he is a fish man. Yep. And this brings up fish man problems. We'll get to that when we get to it. But, um... If Garp was aware of Arlong, Arlong would, Arlong would be like, uh... He'd be turned not into, a problem? He'd be turned into Shoshimi, let's be real. He'd be turned into Shoshimi. Oh, yeah. All like, well, and also, uh-huh. to be fair, they did kind of explain that away. Yeah, they did. They did because they had to. And, and Garp and the the whole thing about that a lot of people complained about is if Gar- you know a lot of fans were like, "Come on, Gar- Garp Garp is super powerful. If Garp was the one chasing after Luffy, Luffy would have been caught." And I. I understand where you're coming from from a power perspective, but also you gotta remember Garp is always super soft on family. Yeah, like he he wouldn't have. He would have he would have he would have let him go it's, anyway. It's called out by a lot of people in the show that he's not really pursuing this all that hard, and he's giving him a lot of chances mm-hmm. to let go. Mm-hmm. Um. This is almost explicit in his conversation with Sengoku, yeah. With well, well, one with Sengoku, two with Zeph. Yep. In the sh- in in the live action show. Oh yeah. With uh with Sengoku in the manga. Oh boy. Yep. I don't even want to think about live action Sengoku. Oh, that's gonna that's, be, uh, yeah. That's gonna be a costuming and CGI nightmare. Hundred but, percent. Uh, but yeah. Um, same could be said of all Marine admirals. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they'll actually get Ringo start? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my. That was... Oh no no no! He's not he's not Ringo. He's uh. No, I, I think all the admirals are based on Japanese actors. On 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. But uh, he he just got those. He just got those Ringo glasses. He does have the Ringo glasses. But yeah. So um. Oh nice. I also with the uh, with um, the first opening episodes, I got I gotta say that I am so you can tell this is written by fans because there is no way that that this wasn't done on purpose. Zoro's first scene of the show is him murdering a black man. And I know out now. Of, I know out of context that sounds crazy. But in the fandom, right, that there has been a thing that we realize when we look back at all of Zoro's fights. All of Zoro's opponents that he has killed have all been of varying shades of brown and or fishmen and or some kind of other like extra deformity like you know she has harp she has harpy wings and talons uh you know wow so minority hunter zoro is his loving nickname within the fandom and they kept minority I... hunter zoro intact that whole thing with zoro was such a it was such a weird scene yeah. So it brought in it brought in Baroque works real early. Yep. I think almost too early. I think that was a little bit of a uh... well. Well, I mean, Gar Garp did talk about it all throughout as a thing that he's investigating in the background. So yeah, it's not too crazy. It's and not too crazy. Just think, a little I think, tease of. I think Baroque works trying to get Zoro in before he even makes a name for did himself. Did anything? Yeah was uh because they're, they're a grand line operation and zoro was not grand line level yep at the time but uh but, i mean maybe they're making an early investment i don't know it was, it's one of those things where it was like yeah it's, it's, it's a weird choice uh but it was a weird choice let's well, let's talk about zoro since we're uh, already on the man well uh wait, 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 before, jay before oh, yeah. before we go you're kind of flying by and not letting tony and i talk Ma sorry 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 Sorry, sorry. Fa fa so, fa fandom, so fandom Ryan, took over Ryan there. Ryan and Tony, I have to ask. Mm. Was this the dawn of your romance with One Piece? Yeah. Well, uh, so did you did you got did you guys like get hooked in with those first uh, those first couple episodes? Yeah, definitely did. Uh, one thing that I really just enjoyed is just the. I was here for the absolute absurdity of what I was witnessing on screen. And since I'm already used to just absurd shit from the Land of the Rising Sun, oh man, I was expecting more shenanigans. If you love absurdist humor and puns, One Piece is the series for you. Yeah. And dude, you know me. I like piratey shit. I like weird shit. Yeah, they definitely hooked me. The, um, the live action show has more pirate shit than the manga, to be honest with you. I, I yeah. feel you. Uh, which, a uh, side note from what I heard, apparently um, they repurposed some of the sets from um, and some of the ships from um, Black Sails. Oh, cool. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, um, as for uh, Gore, because didn't really get to talk about him, mm -hmm. uh, as someone who's not familiar with it, I did get spoiled on the twist with him, but uh, it was still very well done, and definitely, like, part of Luffy's, like, oh yeah, just oh. didn't come up. Oh, also, uh... I forgot I forgot to do this at the top, but I'm gonna be honest with you, viewers and listeners, it's gonna be real hard for me just to to not spoil the show as I talk about it. So I'm just gonna put a generic spoiler alert here and just, you know, let let y'all let y'all know that we are gonna just talk about the show in full. We're not gonna give like big manga spoilers, but we're gonna talk about the show in full. You have yeah, to understand, I hear you. viewers. The stuff covered by One Piece live action was printed in Shonen Jump in the early to mid 90s. Yep. This is yeah. like I like some people say the statute of limitations on spoilers, you know, it's a, it's an ever decreasing thing. Yep. 
but this is listen. This is like thirty year old content. Well, listen, this series One has been Piece, going on One for Piece. my entire life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. One Piece as a whole is an exception to a lot of rules, uh, but and that's I think like part of it in design. Oh yeah, but yeah. Um, as someone who never really was new gore before this, oh Garp, Garp. Sorry, Garp. Ah. No, you're cool. He was really co- cool. The ending did throw me for a little bit until I thought about it uh, with him. Like the heel turn. Uh, or not heel turn. Face the turn? Face turn. The face turn with him threw me off a bit, but you can see it in hindsight. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah. Also... All the connect, all the like parallels between him and Luffy were awesome. Oh yeah, I I love that both actors smile very similarly because that's a big thing in the manga is that you know Garp and Luffy have the same just big ass smile and laughter style. Laughter styles are a big thing in One Piece. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and. Even in the live action, you can tell that they're kind of like uh, two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. Also, including the military stuff here made sense to me uh, as someone who's not familiar with the manga. Because it kind of like, in a way, made, made it so that you could see the parallel stories of, uh, of Kobe and Luffy as they're going up in there. That's actually a, that's feels. actually a great segue. So, what did you guys think about? What did you guys, as you know, new to the uh, new to the franchise uh, fans, think of Kobe as a and character? By extension, Hemlepo. Yep, <laughs> best boy, best boy, Hemlepo. I love just the overall story of what Kobe is going through in terms of him trying to make a name for himself in in this crazy world. I vibe with it. I, I really fuck with it. And then on top of that, I also love the meme worthy potential that bull cut really give him. Good, good, good old hell. Meppo. I'm still a little sad that there was no hammer gun, but you know it is what it is. Well, also technically they never said his name either. Did they know? They never said his name. No. Wow. I just had a cold bull cut. Wow. Oh, I mean, if you uh, if you have if you have caption, did you have captions on? I did. They, still they didn't, didn't say even mention. That's no. crazy. They never drop his name. No. Ha. Oh shit. Yeah. Well, his name yeah, is yeah. Um, his name is Helmet. Okay. Like I said, uh one one uh, rev- one uh reviewer uh reactor who was also not familiar with one piece just kept calling him berries and cream. <laughs> you you could all you could all you could also call him baby Matt Smith because he looks like baby Matt Smith. He has a very Matt oh. Smith face. That he does. Yeah, he, he looks kind of like a if you make Matt Smith with a Draco Malfoy, 100%. and he definitely had the uh, Draco energy. Oh yeah, do you, how that, that's how Mepo's whole joke. He is the embodiment oh, yeah. of my father will have your ass. Yeah, my father uh, will have your you can... ass after he's done beating mine. Yep, uh, he's he's actually kind of a tragic character. He's a very tragic regard. character. I mean, so uh, let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let you in on a little secret about One Piece viewers. It seems like this happy-go-lucky pirate adventure, but Oda is actually tricking you into reading a complex geopolitical thriller. That has well, I mean, fucking weird I can kind of tell that so far. It's, it's a bit more obvious in the live action because oh yeah, they bring the geopolitics in with the parallel marine and straw hat 
yeah duality in it True. as well as uh I'm not gonna say it's a darker tone, but it's it a, can't be it, as cartoony yeah, yeah, as cause the because uh, other because otherwise it it wouldn't be taken as serious. Although I do appreciate the bits of camp they do keep, like Garp's oh, yeah. stupid dog hat. Oh, the yeah. costuming. I, I, yeah. Oh yeah. I, All right. I, so um, as as newbies, what do you guys think of the costuming? I love the costumes. I mean, I'm someone who really loves just designs in general when it comes to like the feel for a character because not only do you have to have the performance in my opinion but you also have to have that look oh, yeah. to represent a character because so and, that's the interesting yeah. thing right um with with one piece that i was kind of afraid of before, like before the show came out is that a lot of the looks in one piece are very flamboyant and goofy and i didn't know if they would be able to they would be able to be translated well uh none of that threw it uh you guys off um as people who no. haven't seen no. one piece for no. real. and uh like i said at first uh kobe and his hair i kind of didn't notice it at first but I loved the, all the hair and the character designs and the costuming. I actually really liked it. Mm -hmm. Kobe has a character because I never mentioned it. Mm -hmm. I like him and I like his story. And, you know, got to recognize another uh, insecure person. <laughs> um, but Kobe's journey is really cool. Uh, I like the whole thing with uh, him and Luffy where he's like, well, they're good pirates and they're bad pirates, so that must mean that they're good marines and bad marines. Yeah. Um, it must be. Yeah. I... I, mm -hmm. I they're, see, at first... They're pretty, they're, they're pretty yeah. villainous in the manga. I, there's I, there's I, not I a lot gonna, of... I was going to say, at first, I was... I didn't know how to feel about them spelling it out like this. Because the manga doesn't spell it out. You kind of just have to see it through actions. I, uh, I, I didn't think that conversation was necessary, but, like, it gets the point across. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like... It, it's one of those, those scripting errors I mentioned where it felt kind of out of character for Luffy to wax philosophical like that yeah he he's not he's not really where one he would to... normally be like go be a marine i don't care your your life doesn't intersect with mine past this point so well it's your dream so do it later loser yeah it, it, it's like it's like yeah. Luffy, luffy's whole thing is look if you want to do it do it uh, just know that if you uh, if you come across me in that uniform i will deck you in the snosh yeah which uh which was nice when uh, they brought it home and did a good moment where uh, they leave each other for the first time and it's like, next time, we might be enemies. But for now, we're friends. Mm -hmm. so, so the big thing with Kobe is, um, if, uh, for those manga readers, his entire development... Was, was it, introduced in, in a thing. Yeah, in cover stories. That is whole unique. Yes, yeah, cover stories. Is um, so at the the front page of every manga, usually has either one of two things. It has either a cover story, or a fan requested illustration. A fan requested animation. Yeah, uh, not animation. A fan requested image. And these images are usually like, a draw a picture of Zoro feeding tiger feeding a tiger ice cream. Yep. There, are, and there are a lot of ice cream themed ones for some reason. Yeah. People really like to see the straw hats eating ice cream. Yeah. Um, I wonder why. Look, it look, actually most of the time it's the dudes. Alright. Yeah. There are very few yeah, times. It's, it's like it's like draw draw this character interacting with this animal. It's like, you know, it's like yep. draw 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 Frankie making a rhino car wash. Uh there's just there's just a lot of wacky stuff. But yeah. yeah. So the the cover stories are a very unique element to, uh, to the manga specifically, 
uh, it's it's super cool because they're these just one page stories that continue, uh, you know, throughout like a, a particular volume <laughs> and together they tell one big story and all the cover stories matter because eventually at some point, whether it's 10 chapters ahead of time, 100 chapters ahead of time, 400 chapters ahead of time, that shit will come back. Yeah, because it's it's they're they're these small wordless one panel excursions of what these background characters are doing, and Kobe was one of the first yep. cover chapter characters. It's how we it's actually how we got introduced to Garp in the manga. Yes, mm-hmm. is uh is Garp took him in took him under his wing and trained him. Though the training in the manga was much more like your typical like uh brutal training arc kind of thing. Yep. Which, and, the way they ended, makes me think that that's going to be in Season 2. Right. Yeah, for sure. Because um, they still have to get him there because... Kobe being a Marine was almost like a... Like, outside of, like... like Kobe's return into the manga is a bit of a spoiler, but mm-hmm. not really, because it was a long time ago. But it, it was like it was a big shock. Yeah. Because he got yeah. a... He he went from like a chubby in, pink-haired nerd, yeah, to hot boy. Yeah, he was with with a face yeah. scar. Bishi uh, Bishi pink-haired kid with a face scar, and Pu- puberty puberty hit him with the pretty stick. It did, and like Which, it's, uh, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. That makes sense now because that means that that's now like an Easter egg. The fact that his first suit was too big for him. Oh yeah. Well, that was more of um on the nose storytelling. Cause it was like, oh that uniform doesn't fit you right. You're not ready to be a marine. Yep. Kinda thing. Yeah. I saw it as, now that I know the backstory, I see it as kind of both. Okay. I I mean, so with with Kobe like from from a from a manga fan's perspective i i'm i'm torn i'm torn cuz i i like the kid's performance but also it kind of takes away the mystique of kobe in a way right cuz uh, you know like also, Cap said he's he kind of a dork mm-hmm. cuz he's always sitting there listening by the door and he's being like a morality pet to Garp. Yeah, which is which is weird. Like Kobe does have this firm belief in honesty, right? And you know, that's something that, you know, carries over to this day in the manga. But So this yeah. this this also treads onto the theme of justice. Yeah. That exists within the Marines. Most exemplified by a character who hasn't showed up yet, Ikenu, whose whole mantra is absolute justice. Yep. He has it like tattooed on his chest or something like or it's like it's on, on his it's like it's on his back. It's on his back yeah. like a Yakuza tattoo. Yeah. Absolute justice. Yep. And And Kobe Kobe's like got that like soft boy like Protagonist justice. Yeah. The where I- idealism. I, yeah. Where Kobe's idealism and and Ikenu's not not like cynicism, but he's like pra- more pragmatic, I guess it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, he's hardcore, was, he's pragmatic. Like he will he will burn you alive if you jaywalk. Cause that's against the law. That's yep. against the law, friendo. Yep. Ooh. Absolute justice. Yeah. Uh, um. It's a but, li- it's, it's 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 a little it's a little weird that they uh they they addressed it so early. Um. But I get it. Yeah. It's it, not, it's not like they're blowing their load on these themes, but it's um. Because it, these themes had a lot more build up in the manga, but you know they're. That you gotta, you, you mean, can't have a thousand episodes of live action. And I mean, your actors, your actors will grow old and die. And I mean, the thing, the thing that's, the thing that gets me, um, like, 
the feeling that I had all throughout this, just kind of in general, is, uh, oh, you're doing this because you don't know if you're getting a second season, so you're trying to hit all the points you can so that if if you do, you already have set up. Yeah. Which, you know, I understand. Makes mm-hmm. sense from makes sense from a production standpoint, especially with the landscape of TV. You never know, like you know, how much you're gonna get. And uh, this might be the first live action anime to get a second season. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So so moving on. Um, as as newbie One Piece viewers, what do you guys think of uh, Syrup Village? Is that what it's called? The yeah, Syrup yeah, Village yeah, arc. Yeah, Syrup Village arc. Oh, no, no, I think Orange Town was before Syrup Village. Orange Town was before Syrup Village. Oh, yeah, Orange and Town the inter- was actually, yeah. And the introduction of Buggy D. Clown. Yes. Oh, man. All right, so what did y'all think of Buggy and the Orange Town arc? I actually really enjoyed just the raw kind of loser energy Buggy gave off. Uh, it's kind of like your typical shonen first arc villain archetype, you know? Mm-hmm. Just this general kind of goober esque villain that thinks he's hotter shit than he actually is, but actually just becomes even greater, just elevated to greatness by falling upwards. Falling upwards is Buggy's biggest C. Yeah. I mean, hearing Ooh. you talk about Buggy, Jay, and from what Cap has said, just watching uh, the show with you guys initially, I just kind of got and understood that vibe of this very interesting villain character. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, what In did his- you think of Buggy? My bad, Tony. Uh, I actually really liked him. Uh, yeah. Like, like, t- like Tony said... He he started off as like the like intro villain to like get the team together and he clearly is not a good guy. I mean the shit that he put all those people through. Which I get why they made that so quick and succinct, but it was a little fast to say, hey look, he just destroyed all this town. But uh I get it. They're trying to go faster. Mm. But, uh... And then, as the show went on, he was just like a... neutral character. Wasn't really a villain. Wasn't really a good guy. That That is kind but, of Buggy. Buggy is definitely very chaotic they, neutral. They really did change his thing from the manga, because, um... So, Buggy shows up again in the East Blue in a surprising way. Yep. Um, we'll get to it when we get to it, but uh, in the manga... I mean, they teased it at Buggy the end. Is a, Buggy is another cover story character. Yep. So they do... They finish him off the same way where they... Uh, they finish him off slightly differently. So instead of locking his body parts into trunks, they tie them up into, like, one big package and, like... Uh, Ship him off. Yeah. So he's stuck yeah. in the uh, the chibi buggy mode, and he gets the second cover arc, where uh, he teams up with a uh, with Alvida, who had recently acquired her own devil fruit. Yep. And the two team up for a for a time, and Buggy falls upwards more, and gets all his body uh, back. Yep. Makes sense. Here it looks like he. Just as someone who doesn't know the show and everything, but does know TV, it seems like they might be going with the fact that he tells her about Double Fruit in this version. I mean, right? Yeah, because because like they tease their team up at the at the as the stinger of uh, the end of the season, so we right. know we know that's mm-hmm. going to happen. Um, um, it's just that uh, he does he doesn't interact with the Straw Hats again until. Uh... Logue Town? Yeah, Logue Town. Which, yeah, yeah. Which, which is where they're going to start season two. Right. Uh, I, 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 I think it was mostly, and I don't blame them for this, I think it was mostly just to have the actor more. Which, the, the guy, yeah. 
That guy loves being Buggy the Clown. And I don't blame yes. him. Yes. He's I would also love to be Buggy the Clown. Same. So, look, yes. Buggy the Clown and... is a theater kid's dream role. Oh, yeah. Oh, Easy. yeah. And uh, the Buggy in a Bag thing... Oh it was man! Really cool. Where 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 they turn where they turn Buggy into Ymir? For oh Donald yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mimir. Mimir, yeah, Mimir, yeah. Oh shit! Oh, that was that but was funny. Then, but then at the end, he's like, "Hey, get me back to my body, and I can help you." And then they do, and he's just like, "Fuck you! I'm no, out." I I love that because uh, it so it's a nice homage to. Uh, uh, with, with Zoro, right? So in the show, like he he uh, basically lets Buggy attach himself to his body, and he just go and you know when he goes, "Fuck you, I'm out." Uh, Zoro Zoro just says, "Fucking clown," which is funny because Zoro is the one that always throws circus based insults at Buggy in the manga. So it, <laughs> I, I thought that was a that was a nice touch. Um, yeah, with Buggy. I was surprised because I was fully expecting them to go full ledger. And in the beginning, I was like, oh, no, here it is. But then when the spotlight fucked up, I was like, OK, OK, we're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, he, and he goes off about the nose. Yep. And he's like, right under my Damn it! You got it in my head. Yeah, that's it. That's his whole thing. That's his entire joke. Um, mm. I I appreciate that they trimmed a lot of the fat from Orange Town. Uh, like we still get a nod to the Orange Town B plot with the with the sad doggo in front of the destroyed pet store. Um, right. Well, it it, it feels like something you can cut in yeah, retrospect, yeah. but it was it. It felt important at the time because it it, was, it galvanized it, the crew and it really it was Luffy's first big protagonist moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. where yeah. Uh, he was defend this dog was uh, defending the dog food store and the uh, buggy had, like killed the owner. Yep. Ooh. So the dog the like like buggy had like intimidated all of the townsfolk. But the dog stood defiant. Yep. And, and it and eventually like, uh, mm -hmm. bolstered everyone's resolve enough that they stood out against him. Also, I, I hear you. Also, Buggy basically nuked that pet store with his, oh, buggy, yeah. with his buggy ball, which I, I hope becomes <laughs> a thing in the Logetown portion of season two. Because they skipped over it. Yeah, like cause they could say he used the buggy ball to flatten the town, but yep. But yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm it's it's I'm not super important, that. and but, it, it, but but it's a nice, but it's you know iconic to the character, so I feel like they're oh, gonna yeah. do it. Just like we we thought that they weren't gonna do a a big moment for Garp, we were swearing up and down that it wasn't gonna happen. And then <laughs> let that man throw a cannonball like a shot put. Yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. And it he was did it. Fantastic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I will say though that um, I also get why how they did it, why they did it the way that they did it, because having Nami just come in and witness it just herself is a hint to uh, what happens with her character. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, Nami. So, Nami's the character. Yeah, so let's. let's, so let's I feel. Talk, I feel yeah. got, got the worst of the writing. Yeah, let's 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 talk about Nami. Uh, I want to hear you guys' opinion first. Uh, so we'll start with Tony. Uh, so as a newbie, what did you think of Nami? I thought she was okay as a member of the Straw Hat crew. I mean, we got her big emotional moment towards the end of the season. But mm. overall, Peter and her was like, she was okay. She wasn't egregiously bad. And you would know if I would say something was egregiously bad if I was like animated and just kind of pissed off about it. Perturbed. Yeah. Yeah. And so when something's like mid, it, it's just mid, in my honest opinion. Okay. So 
for you, Nami's mid. <laughs> don't, don't, don't let it, don't utter the sentence Nami's mid to any One Piece fans because you'll, no, uh, you, you, th that, those well, are some he, of the biggest fighting words in that fandom. And it's just in terms of the actress's performance and just oh, yeah. how her storyline was presented. It's like, she's, she was represented well from what I understood of mm -hmm. the character, at least in terms of adaptation purposes. But it, from what Cap said, yeah, from how you described the character, it's kind of one of the weaker portions of the adaptation. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. not saying that her character overall is aggressively mid. It's just the adaptation has made it aggressively mid. Yeah. I, right. So don't get it twisted, other One Piece fans. What do Me, you think of I Nami? Really, mm -hmm. I really liked her uh, overall, with like her personality and how she interacted. I loved her staff. Oh yeah, uh, well, uh, she has a she has a big Sun Wukong thing going on. Uh, it becomes way more mm -hmm. obvious later in the series, but like. Ah. She uh but she definitely does. And her like smart ass remarks were good and I like the fact that she was like the thief and the navigator mm -hmm. at the same time for the team. But yeah, I will admit that uh mainly in the like last episode it, it was a little off and even though we'll get to it. We'll get to it when we do, but like a certain character, when it's supposed to be like her story, it seemed like the focus was not on her. All right, so let me let me kick this off. So I'm gonna start with love. All right, I'm I'm gonna start with love. I think Emily Rudd has the strongest dramatic performance of the entire Straw Hat crew. Her moment, unfortunately. Yeah. This is a dramatic story. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I I really, like, her, the moment with her, like, you know, losing her treasure and just free, losing her shit, like, that was pitch perfect. The, the scene where she's stabbing her tattoo and then leads up to the iconic Luffy save me moment. Great stuff. However, Un until Luffy's actor ruins it. Yep. He, you're not supposed and, to. And it, instead of her like covering her mouth to stop it, stop you know the crying, mm -hmm. it looked like she was covering up a laugh. You're and look the the thing the thing that fucked up that moment for me, Luffy wasn't supposed to talk. He was just supposed right. to put the hat on and keep going. Right. But he um, like if he said it once, if it was just a whisper, you know, like like a like a like just like a, a short whisper to her, like um, it's it's weird because right they they added on to this scene, but they didn't include the scene where Nami's in front of the village people, and Luffy stands up in the middle of the village and yells at the top of his lungs, "Nami, you're my friend, and I'm here to help you." They almost have that scene. But in that one, yeah. he doesn't say anything. Yeah, it's so weird. It's it's weird. Like, like all right, so here's the major problem. Mm -hmm. So I was watching it, and he, he puts that in her head, and he says, like, um, I forget what he says. It's like, I'm on my way, or like... Uh, yeah. he, he says, of course I'll help you. You're oh, my yeah, friend. Of course I'll help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, if he just whispered that, like, once, he's like, of course I'll help you, you're my friend. Yeah. And then just, like, did the, like, did the nod to Zoro. Yeah. The, like, the, up the, nod uh, yeah. to Sanji. Cause, that and then, that uh, scene cause, was badass. Because that's the, but, like. That's, that's how it happens in yeah, the manga and in the yeah, anime. Yeah. But and, instead and, he goes, of course I'll help you. B. Of, uh, louder, of course I'll help you. Shouting at the top of his lungs. And he does, like, the Luffy, yeah. like. The Luffy arms triumphant out. yell, yeah. Uh huh. And it ruins the yeah. moment. And and then she goes like yeah. this. And instead of like, yeah, because I, I don't want to let them it's, see it's, me cry. It's supposed to be more like this, you know? Right. 
But like, like yeah, like it should cover her what eyes. She, what she's doing, what she's doing, like this, like she's trying to stop from laughing at Luffy. Right. At least that's that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like, and it and looks it, it ruins it, it ruins one of the not you know it ruins one of the best early moments in One Piece. And like, l- let me tell let me tell you guys something. So you know hallway scenes in Daredevil. Yeah. yeah. You, you know how like for for Marvel fans, Marvel Netflix fans, they're always looking forward to a ha- hallway scene. Let me tell you what the equivalent of that is for is to One Piece fans. When the Straw Hats walk to a boss fight. The walks to boss fights are some of the hypest moments and you know it's a walk to the boss fight because they always play that same theme. Dun 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 Oh man. It's so it's not even the walk to the boss fight. It's it's the I wanna live moment. Yeah. Cause it really comes down with like the crew, new like new crew member, fucking finally breaks down and stops re- putting and up reve- a facade and reveals them to their true self to Luffy, which Luffy right. has known the whole time because Luffy is the most emotionally intelligent yeah. character in this Weirdly world. Weirdly emotionally intelligent. Mm-hmm. Weirdly empathetic and emotionally intelligent, and yep. they hint that yep. it's that it's secretly like a telepathic superpower he has yeah. later on. Yeah. That's kind of weird, but but go off. That's 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 for another One Piece podcast. Um, uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, um, but that's that's getting ahead because the the other the other that's problem the, end of the, series. the other problem I have with Nami is that I mean uh, I I want to get your opinion on this cap. To me, yep. it felt like they really softened Nami's edges. So they they. Softened some edges, but they hardened others. Yeah. Like, Nami Nami feels like the victim of a first draft problem, where, like, Nami is written in the first draft of this, where they cut back on the cartoonishness of it. Because mm-hmm. she's got a very, like, serious, no-nonsense, we got a pirate. Yeah. Jesse, we gotta steal some shit. And Luffy is goofy. Usopp is Usopp. And she kind of clashes. Yeah. Because she's not the, like, like in the manga, she's still kind of a... Um, she's the straight man. Not a wet blanket, but yeah, she's she's she usually plays like, Luffy will say something dumb. He'll get angry and punch him. Yep. And it works really well in her introduction when he like does that like forceful team up with her. That's like classic. Oh yeah, that Luffy was, Nami. Yeah, that, was th- that, that Luffy Not Nami. A crew. Yeah, that Luffy Nami dynamic there. She's just like. No, no, uh, no, no, no. All right, you know what? That actually bothered me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, like, uh, like, I, I, I wanted, like, we'll get to I, when we talk wanted, about Zoro because yeah, yeah. I think it'll be more yeah. pertinent. Oh time, yeah. But like... Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. You're right. You're right. But yeah. Um, so with Nami, like, Na- Nami feels like she was from a rough draft, but this was more serious. Um, I don't, because like the the thing the thing she that has bothers that weird me... drinking game moment with Zoro that feels out of place. Yeah. The thing that bothers me is like there are a lot of like obvious hints that she's a good person on the inside in the manga she's just a straight up bitch for like three-fourths of it up like three-fourths of like her opening time in one piece but it's fun yeah it's 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 catty bitchiness it's like she she's very uh Fujiko Mine. Yeah, there, there's more sarcasm in it. You know? Right. Let's and she playful. like like in this one she's very bitter. Um she has this like, well, like weird like like ooh, I hate rich people. The, the scene the scene that Ew, Kai is gross cuz she's got money. The scene like, that really pissed me wait, off. Wait, Nobby, you love money more than life. Yeah, I was say, the scene that really pissed me off was when she when she told when Luffy told her that he was going to be king of the pirates and she was just like, "I hate pirates. I hate them." I was like, "All right. A-pab. I get it, but that's a bit much, Nami." 
Like, yeah, she, she was. She definitely she was, had a uh, a, a pad energy. Mm -hmm. Let's let's avoid that if we can. Um, mm -hmm. But you know I what I mean. Yeah, I know. Um, but like, like in the manga, she's like, I don't, I don't trust pirates. Yeah, which is an understandable thing because most, most of the media in One Piece and society in general tells you pirates are, you know, untrustworthy thieves and murderers. Right. Um. Oh man, that was that was another problem I had with. <laughs> yep. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Kobe's like, pirates are all thieves and murderers. And Louie's like, well, I'm a different kind of pirate. And oh, I'm like, no, 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 no. All right. I, I, I got I to gotta bring up this absurdity right here. He says, so, no, if that's not what it is. So, Kobe says, pirates are thieves and murderers. He says, not the pirates. I know. Luffy, you saw Shanks murder a guy in front of you. You stole things that he stole from other people. That he explicitly said, mm -hmm. hey. We stole this devil fruit. And you clearly see it's in the marine box. The sigil is right. on it. Shanks ain't a fucking marine. He stole that. He murdered that guy. The pirates you know are thieves and murderers. I mean, I... one literally stole you. Exactly. Like, it, does, it just doesn't. Alright. Like... So there's a real old bit of prototype One Piece. Mm -hmm. Um, so originally in One Piece, there were supposed to be two two types of pirates. Yep, the Morganeers and the Peace Mains. Right, and Morganeers are what you think of when you think of a pirate. Like they do crime. Mm -hmm. They're crime pirates. And then there's Peace Mains, which I guess turned into the Shichi Bukai. Yeah. But um, Peace Mains um, explicitly only steal from other pirates. Yep. They're still not good people, but they interact with the world peacefully. Yeah, they don't they don't harm civilians or you know raid and yeah. pillage islands. But they do absolutely crush other pirates. Yep. And that was supposed to be what the Straw Hat crew was. They were supposed to be peace mains. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess that might have, like, if I'm being really generous, mm -hmm. that might have been what they were going for, but... With that line, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Can, I can see it. But, I... so, anyway. Um, so, syrup. Yeah. Um, well, and actually, on to, uh... actually be before we get to Syrup Village, I, I want to I, I wanna just... Just rip this band-aid off and talk right. about Zoro. Uh, okay, we got yeah, we got to talk about Zoro. Well, um, first of all, yeah, yeah. So, so, what do you two think of Zoro? Yeah, we'll start with you guys. We'll start with you guys, <laughs> then we'll go on our rant. Uh, I really or... liked Zoro, just as this quiet badass type that is just full of snark. Really like that. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, okay, Brian. I really liked him. Um... I will say that for all the hype that they gave it, I wish we would have seen more of the the three sword fighting, but I kind of get it because he only saves it for big moments. But uh, overall, could have done without some of the alcohol humor, but overall I thought he was a pretty badass character. Mm -hmm. His fighting was excellently done, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I liked him as a whole as a character. Okay, so let me let me st let me let me start this. Off. Let me just rip this bandaid off. Full disclosure: I'm a st I'm a Zoro stand. I'm a Zoro stand. Zoro's my guy, and I have to say it. Uh, the the actor McKenyu, he looks exactly like Zoro, the, the, and or like you know what I would expect. For Zoro, for the most part, his face is—he's little... even weirdly top-heavy. Yeah, which which is cool. Yeah, the, the thing that I could not stand about this version of Zoro that pissed me off to no end was his too cool for school ass attitude. Because the not a crew thing with Nami, it makes sense. Zoro, 
Zoro, when when Luffy when Luffy tell Zoro you're joining my crew, he's like, eh, all right, you saved me, I'll join your crew, I'll be your first. Mate. No, it was um, join your crew. Pfft, all right, if you can get me my swords back from sword detention, I'll join your crew. As, as like one of those like yeah, knife hunt impossible task kind of de deals. Yeah. And then and then Zoro was impressed because like, oh shit, you beat up all those marines and got my swords back. All right, you might be worth it. And plus, being on a pirate crew could actually lead me to finding more pirates that I could collect bounties on. All right, it's a win-win. I'll join right. your crew. But Zoro doesn't have any of that here, and it's weird. So, uh, so in the manga, Zoro is a quiet badass, but he's also really, really dim. He's as dumb as Luffy. He's as dumb as Luffy, but he's cool about it. Yep. Like, Luffy's an idiot that opens his mouth. Zoro's an idiot that keeps it shut. Yep. And he has moments of, like, cool insight, and he's got his badass one-liners. But the other thing that really pisses me off oh, okay. about what yeah, they did yeah, with Zoro... Yes. yes, okay, so... Is... This fucking... This... Real fighters don't call their moves, this... Mr. No. Onigiri okay. Slash, Let me... Mr. Yeah. Tiger Hunting, Mr. 120-pound Mr. Phoenix Cannon, One... Mr. 420-pound Dragon Cannon, Mr. Ashura, Mr. Ashura Dead Man's Game. Yeah. Oh, no. Everybody in One Piece has called attacks. And Zoro is thing. the one who does it the most. Z well, Zoro does it. Sanji names all his kicks. Yep. Luffy names all his weird rubber powers. Uh, not, Usopp not, has names for every bullet he shoots out of that stupid slingshot. Not, Nami has names for her attacks with her equipment that she gets later in the series. Yep. Now, uh, see, here's the thing, though. Um, as maybe a possible defense for them. I could see that in this version, he learns to do it by being around the others. See, and no. No, 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 no. See, I, I tried to give it that pass because I was like, okay, they're, they're saving it for the end, but he's going to finally learn to call out his fucking special attacks. And, you know, right before that, Sanji did it. So he's like, ah, uh, you know, I was thinking, oh, the Sorrow of Sanji Beef. He's gonna be, I, I can outdo you. I can come up with a cooler name. I thought that's what was gonna happen. But nope. Still nothing. What the fuck? It's. It's out of character that. I, I, I can see why. Playing Zoro as he was in the manga could make him. The actor. Feel less cool, but. But Zoro is cool. He's the coolest character. <laughs> he like, like all right. So another thing he said is the alcohol jokes. Yeah. Um. That is Zoro's Zoro whole is day. a machine that turns sake into special attacks. Yep. He he is. If he, if, if if Zoro is not asleep, he's training. If he's not training, he's, he's drinking. If he's not drinking, he's lost. Yep. And that's another thing they made like one joke about but didn't really hammer in is that Zoro has a negative sense of direction. Yep. I mean, look, anybody who anybody who's uh, who is watching the video or listening to the podcast and is also a fan of my Twitch streams, I repeatedly mentioned I have the sense of direction of Zoro. The reason I say that is because I can't navigate for shit unless I see a big glowing marker on a map. Even then, yeah. he still gets lost. Yup. So, I don't, even it, then, you have to sometimes have someone over your shoulder say, "Turn left here, turn right here." Yeah, exactly. And that's that's how Zoro is in the show. Yeah. Um. And it it, it bothers so they, me. They they saddle him with this like. Yeah, it's, it's too cool for school. It's. So weird. He, he's, I, and he, like his like his humor is good, but and like it's in character for Zoro. But I feel like it, he overplay this actor overplays it. Like you know, his he does have back. the he does have the one liners. He he is very snarky. 
But, like, the only times where he really gets into, like, actual quippy mode is whenever he's going back and forth with Sanji. Which, I will right. say, Zoro and Sanji's dynamic was great. Like, that's one of the only times where I was like, alright, this actually feels like Zoro here. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I, I, I just, I didn't... I I was I was really disappointed in Zoro. Like you know, Cap uh, Cap, Cap, sa Cap says Nami was on the worst, but you know I guess as a Zoro fan, I was just really disappointed with like the portrayal of Zoro. The action was great, the actor looked great, his motif and the theme music was great. Which by the way, I also love Nami's uh, theme music as well. It's this loop on the third ass fucking big band number that's dope perfect for nami um but yeah well as someone I, who is not familiar with the source material why i feel like zoro didn't get done as dirty is because he still got his like big action moments oh yeah he did yeah, even he, if even if he didn't get his uh fight with hachi yeah he doubt in he, our long park he definitely but... did get big action moments so like it's not it's not a total loss and but no, I I feel you. It's and uh, I will say uh -huh. that that final fight with the fishmen and everything, it did feel kind of weird that he took a sidestep and Zoro handled the bad guy on his uh, uh, Sanji handled him on his own. Yeah, well, th that's because so that's the reason that happens is because the character Zoro actually is supposed to fight doesn't exist or at least did not appear yet i guess ah and i get it because that character is an octopus fishman and that would be really hard to do with practical especially with the varying levels of quality of the different practical effects for the fishman so i understand but also they're gonna have to bring that character in because that character is important later down the line so we'll have to see unless they just don't have him but it, it'd feel weird if it he wasn't feel there super weird um so so that's zoro he's he's got problems he does okay i can understand where you're coming from but since i don't know the source material i don't Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You, oh yeah! You yeah! Of course you yeah! You wouldn't have the problem because you know you you don't you don't have a preconceived expectation of right. what Zoro is that's been built up over but twenty if, years. But if you do, if you do in the meantime, mm -hmm. attack the uh, attack the material. Yep. You'll you'll feel the difference for sure. Cause it's they're 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 different characters. They um, are. Um, so on to the on to the next on to the next member of the crew. Yeah, Usopp. Usopp. Usopp with Syrup Village. What did you guys think of the whole uh, Syrup Village? Village Usopp, Kaya, and uh, Captain Kuro. acquiring the hidden fifth member of the crew, the Going Merry. Yep. Well, I think. This was the more entertaining and more fleshed out stories of the season. And I got a lot more out of it than some of the other crew introductions, even though my personal favorite is the one that comes after. But this is definitely the closest second <laughs> of all of the adaptable crew introductions so far. Because mm -hmm. it was better paced. Uh, it was more snappy in terms of writing. And I enjoyed Usopp's just uh, bullshittery. Even though he had his moments where he was brave. And that's one thing I know for a fact about a lot of the characters in One Piece. One thing I knew for sure is Usopp is the biggest coward on the planet. Yep. And the one moment where he felt brave, I was like, that ain't right. 
that it's like why is he suddenly acting like uh he knows his shit and brave when he should be running like a little bitch but i i know just giving it that one moment to just try to impress the woman he's in love with get it mm-hmm. i don't like it i think it's kind of dumb but i understand what they were trying to do but also out of the villains in that particular arc the they're called the black cat pirates right they are yeah mm-hmm. i the really love i loved kuro as the antagonist of this particular part of the season he was enjoyable the actor did an amazing job uh kaya looked on death's door but that was the whole point of that story i just kind of liked what they did especially with her makeup to kind of give off the vibe that she is just living her last legs yeah i i don't know it's just a lot of things that i can appreciate from the costuming just the performances except for one little hiccup I enjoyed it. Okay. But overall, with this actor, and, fantastic job. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, I, me- I mentioned McKenna and Emily Rudd. Uh, Usopp's actor is named Jacob Romero Gibson. So shout out to him. Yeah, he did an amazing job, in my opinion. All right, Brian. Oh, yeah. I, I, I will agree with that. I, I liked him as a character. Um, his introduction was really cool. The villain was great. The black cats were, I, but they're anime henchmen adapted into oh, live action. Oh, are you so. talking? Oh, are you talking about the Nyanban brothers or Nyanban siblings? Yeah. Yeah. They were lesser, but. But yeah, um, I did like so, the, the arc as a whole. Um, I will say that, uh, like I alluded to before, it was kind of weird that uh, it was Usopp's arc, and yet Zoro's we story, got Zoro's the Zoro flashback. Well, okay. yeah. So, all right. At first, I thought the same way too, but actually, it makes a lot of sense. Although this is another case of on the nose writing, or I guess on the nose foreshadowing, because Zoro gets trapped in a well and essentially recreates Batman the Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. And it it's a foreshadowing to Mihawk's uh, Mihawk's use of the proverb of the frog and the frog in the well, which you know describes Zoro as, you know, just Again, the the you know big fish in the small pond trying to trying to go for the big guy when you're not even anywhere near close to re- being ready, and like it makes sense for that. I think Usopp definitely got enough time to to flesh out his character and his backstory, so I'm not as mad at it uh, after you know watching it a second time and really thinking about it. Um, yeah, you're you're right. Um... So, but overall, I did like the story, and the villain was really cool. I do like the small touch that, uh, even though he did never had, he didn't have his glasses on as the butler, he still did the uh, glass thing because he's just used to it. Mm-hmm. So, there are some crucial pieces missing from Syrup Village. Yep. Um. A couple of those are referenced, and a couple of those are not. So, the big problem with the Nyanban brothers is they are absorbing all of the other lesser henchmen. Yeah, they're an amalgamation of all the all the henchmen into into one, basically. Ah. In, in the real Syrup Village arc, of real in in the in the manga and anime version of the Syrup Village arc, um, Usopp has like three minions. The veggie pirates. Yep. Um, oh right, I do remember that. I'm actually, um, I'm actually glad they're gone. If I'm being yeah, honest. Yeah, they they're kind of fillery, but um, 
Like, they, they exist to hammer home the point of Usopp's lying. Yep. Because they're a bunch of kids who idolize Usopp. Um, and them growing to accept him for who he really is is part of the arc. But uh, yeah. it's it's fine that it's not in there. Um, but the other thing is that um, there are more black cats around town. So they become a bigger threat because... It's not just Kea's uh, mansion that they've infiltrated. Yeah, they've infiltrated, they've infiltrated the town all itself. of Syrup Village. Yeah, so it's it's way it's way more insidious. And, yeah, and like I'm okay with this because they basic they reference it and basically explain why this character isn't there, but they take away my favorite henchman, Django. Django is a hypnotist character. Based on who, Michael um, Jackson. Who is based on Michael Jackson. Based on Michael Jackson. Has a weird little pharaoh beard. And moonwalks. And but Rust. his hypnotism is very important. Yep. Because uh, Django's hypnotism is part of Kuro's plan. Yep. And it introduces a second level of the boss fight. Because after... Like, this is a big thing with the Neon Brown Brothers especially. Is after Zoro beats them up the first time... Django hypnotizes them, and they go feral, and it turns into a really intense boss fight because yep. all these jobbers suddenly have that, like, anime, you're only consciously using, like, 50% of your strength kind of thing. Yep. And, and, the, and you uh, know, the, like, they start to, uh, they ignore pain because they're hypnotized, and... Also, the uh, the other thing that not having Django appear undercuts a little bit is Morgan. Because Axe Hand Morgan was hypnotized by Django to believe that he was the one who captured and uh, eventually executed Captain Kuro, which... Uh, like he used Morgan because Morgan already had a pretty decently sized ego and then getting this big win overinflated it, which is what causes Morgan to be who he is. And uh -huh. so without Django, Morgan is just kind of an asshole to be an asshole, which is fine. But, you know, that is piece. a bit of a uh, there's more. A lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the nuance is lost. Yeah, because because there's another there's another real big scene that they cut out much to the uh, much to the deridement of the arc um, so uh, as it's like a like an anniversary thing mm -hmm. uh, Kaya because as you notice he's constantly adjusting his glasses mm -hmm. uh, so Kaya gives him a pair of glasses that have a little hook around the ear so that they won't slip anymore. Mm hmm oh. And she unfortunately gives him this present on the day because, like, it's her birthday, but she gives him a present. Yep. Just as a thank oh. you for taking good care of him, her and stuff. Right. So, in that scene where uh, they're in the basement, uh, they're instead uh, Mary and Kuro are or Clahador, Clahador, as you would know him at the time. Yep. Um, mm. Are in, like, the, like, living room. And he just drops the glasses on the ground and crushes them under his heel. Yep. Ooh. And that's to say, and, and th that's, the, that's, when the, that's when the shoe drops. It's like, literally. oh, fuck, he's evil. Yep. Yeah. And Mary sees him doing this, and he gives his little. I've been playing the long con to get all of her money. Unfortunately, you had to witness this, and he doesn't kill Mary. Yeah. He just kind of like gives him like that like judo chop to the back of the neck kind of thing. Yeah, like Vegeta did to Kid Trunks in in the Boo arc, basically that. Yeah. Which I gotta say. I am surprised that they're playing for keeps with this live action. I was not expecting Mary to die. Yeah. Because uh, Mary's the one who gives them the ship because it's, uh, it's technically after... his. Yeah, because it's modeled after him. He built yeah. it. 
so well, it's got the it's got the sheep theme because he's a sheep man. Yep. So the the live action gave him actual horns. In the manga, his hair is just kind of swirly like that. Yeah, his ha- his hair his hair is just curled up. It's just a really intense cowlick. It's interesting because the dude, the marine dude who was working for Arlong, I heard was an animal man in the yeah Nezumi. He was an actual rat person. Yep. And yet they decided to go with a different direction than the live action. But yet they decided to make Mary an actual. Well, interesting. They, they, I mean, they, they did it. Like, I, 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 I like um, what they did with Ratman. Yep. Because uh, he's still got yeah, the whiskers. I like he's it. got, the, he's he's got, got the, the goatee. He's got the pink nose. He, and he still he's has got the, the, he's, he's got the he's got the rabbit. He's got the the ratier hood. Yep. Which is cool. Um, yeah. All right. But, so, but, but I think I think. Them changing but, it now, knowing that it was different. I think that it makes it more impactful that this ship is called the Mary. Oh yeah, because it, yeah, well, it's like dedicated I, it, to one. It's it's weird because the ship was always the Going Mary. Yeah, it didn't. Luffy didn't name it. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't need. It didn't need a. It didn't need the any significance of the name. They were just like. Mary was just like, oh, I, this ship? I, I call her the Going Mary. It's like, okay, that's cool. Well, it's the Going Mary it is. Like, they put a lot of sauce on naming things when Luffy doesn't really care. Luffy lets other people name stuff for him a lot. Um, also, the figurehead. We gotta talk about okay. the figurehead. Yeah. Um, so so in, in, in the show, in the manga, the figurehead is much more stylized. And it has, um, and the, my, oh, the issue that I keep bringing up that, like, I think would be the easiest fix to make it bearable, the Going Mary has pupils in, right. in, in the, uh, on the figurehead. Like, it, the figurehead is like a sphere with sheep horns mm-hmm. and eyes and, like, a smiley face. Yep. So if you if you just paint in the eyes and the smile, it'll fix it. And my issue mm. with that is like, our, so I, they give it they don't give it like a smile, but they give it like a like an open mouth, and it yeah, looks like it's screaming. Yeah, I don't like the open mouth. They should have just give it the pencil smiley, simple and effective. And it's it's odd because like at first I was like, okay, they're probably just not going to do dumb goofy figureheads in general. But then I thought about, it, I was like, no, 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 no. We saw the stupid duck on Alvita ship. We There's saw the stupid duck on Alvita ship. There's the mm-hmm. bulldog on, on Garp's Garp ironclad. Yep. Yeah. Like the Baratier is almost a one for one yep. for the manga Yep. outside of the in- inside. But I don't mind them classing up the inside to be a little bit more, um, Titanic-y, yeah. like mm-hmm. that's fine. It's like a fancier restaurant. Yeah, that was cool. Um, um, yeah, but yeah, uh, it, it's just, it's just weird that they they don't give that detail to the Mary, cause like the Mary's expressiveness is such a key part to the early portions of the series. It's they give face faults to the going Mary in some of the uh, like yeah sailing chapters, like when they get caught in the storm. Like the going Mary will do like a whoa, oh. like yeah, but uh, um. So talking about the Syrup Village arc and Usopp, I really like Usopp. Uh, Jacob, uh, uh, Jacob Romero Gibson does a great job. Although I will say it's really weird to see an Usopp that fucks. Yeah, this, this Usopp fucks, like. <laughs> This is up. Tells you he fucks. Yep. But fumbles. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but like, uh, it's it, it's weird that he's so attractive. Yeah, in the uh, in the in the manga and in the anime, he's way uglier. Like, uh, he has uh, like he has the. I, like I wouldn't unfortunate say, lips. I yeah. guess I could call them. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't where, say where they're that like he's, a solid like tire around his mouth. I wouldn't say that he's like ugly per se. I think the issue is Usopp is supposed to be the most normal looking person out of this 
group of anime proportioned ass characters like Zoro with his right. big anime protagonist muscles, Sanji with his super smooth, cool style of dress, Nami with the early Oda proportions. Um, you know, Luffy being Goku but a pirate. Yeah, but Usopp is just a guy. And right, and he didn't look like a guy to me. He he was too so. Damn so the real the real problem with Usopp is um, this isn't the actor's fault. No, but he's too fit. He is really fit. Yeah, he is really fit. Um, in the, in the like, what they should have done was given him like one size bigger overalls. Yeah, and that might have solved it. Cause, cause like in he, he, in in the manga and in the anime, pre time skip. Um, he is a twig. He is a he has like thin rubber hose arms. He has a very thin torso and he wears very baggy clothing mm -hmm. that emphasizes just how like out of his depth and. But then like, but then post time skip, he works out and he gets jacked as fuck. Right. And he, so this version uh, gives him the post time skip muscles. It's just a little weird. But but also 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 he has I a can twelve see... inch nose. We I I can excuse the nose not being a thing. That I yeah, understand. Um... Well, it's just one of those things where it's like it's funny because even on his uh on his Jolly Roger. Yep. They reduce the nose size. Yeah, yeah, they give it a normal nose. I thought that was I thought that was a funny joke. That um, was a real funny joke, um, but, um, go on. But, yeah, we don't need another, um, Bradley Cooper Maestro, which, that's a whole controversy, but, uh, anyway, uh, thing is, is, um, that, what I was gonna say, sorry, it took me a minute, yep. is, um, they don't, like, give him the Usopp body that you're talking about, but, they still give him the, the personality, like, when they're walking to the tangerine he, farm, and he's like, I, I'm I'm well, a boat guy, I'm not a walking it, guy. It's it's weird, because they, they mix that personality a lot. Because, uh, like, mm -hmm. in, in, Spirit, in Syrup Village in particular, like Tony mentioned, he has that brave moment. But unlike Manga Syrup Village, where he's chicken shit for most of it and it builds up to the brave moment he kind of just has the brave moment like him running away with nami and kaya wasn't a cowardly thing that was just the logical thing because kuro was trying to fucking kill them that wasn't usopp being yeah. a bitch that was usopp using his head like there some there are a lot of moments of usopp being a bitch before he gets that i gotta nut up for kaya moment yeah, and so like mm -hmm. it kind of, it loses its luster a little bit there. Also, it's weird that they make Usopp and Kaya a relationship in this, because she friend zones him hard. Oh yeah, <laughs> she goes. She's like, uh, it's like, all right, Usopp, have fun on your journey. I'm gonna go to medical school, and I'm never going to see you again. Yeah. He doesn't even get like a cover story or anything. It's really nope. weird. That's how you. That's how you know they're not going to be a thing. Uh, but that's more on Oda because Oda, Oda in particular, has said like very much like Akira Toriyama. He's bad at romance, so he's not going to do it for real. Some of the side characters hook up, but it's a really. It's more of a comedy thing than yeah. anything else. Yeah, it's more of a comedy. Th it's mostly for bits. Or the couple of times Which... he shows relationships that are super toxic to illustrate oh, that yeah. this, this, villain, this guy is Which a bad is guy. Which is weird. Which is weird because as the internet does, a lot of people on the internet are shipping uh, show Nami and Zoro. I mean, that's fandom. Like that's the, fandom. Um, straw, yeah. straw, straw Hat cross. Straw Hat ships have existed since the beginning of time, um, but they are all explicitly non-canon because in a uh, Oda has like yeah. a like an answer, like a question and answer like thing he puts out with like yep. the full release in the volumes uh, in the back of the, in the volumes. volumes. Yep, uh, they're called SBSs. Um, 
I forget why, but oh, it doesn't really matter. The name in Japanese is, uh, it's like, it. the words are SBS. Right. That's why. Yeah. They're like, sensei something something. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the, like mm-hmm. ask sensei questions or something yep. like that. Yeah, it, 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 um, it's, it's ask Oda, basically. Yeah, yeah. ask Oda. Uh, and in the ask Oda, they're like, uh, what's up with the crew? How can you travel with somebody as pretty as Nami and not make moves on her? And he's like, well, the entire crew is in love. With, with adventure! adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. I think I, I think I saw somewhere the showrunner talking about it, and he said that one of the conditions from Oda was no inner crew romances. Like, yes. Because like, that's, a, that's a hard and fast rule of One Piece, is... Yep. Everyone's adventure sexual, except Sanji. Sanji's just but sexual. Sanji sexual. Sanji is cursed to never score because of plot. It's it's it's, yeah. it's his joke. Um, and like, uh, like characters are allowed to hook up with other like Straw Hats are allowed to hook up with like other arc characters. Like Zoro has a thing going on in one arc. Uh, you know, obviously Usopp had Kaya but got friend zoned. It would be we Chopper Cake okay, Island exists. Yeah, Chopper has a thing because he, you know, he finds people. But we'll, you know, get into that whatever. But you know, it's a whole thing. So, um, the, like, I like. It's Usopp. not that the show's romanceless. It's just um, it's not inter. It's not inter crew. Yeah, they, it's they, not inter crew, and it's not something that is particularly important to One Piece. Yeah, they fi- they find their romances in other places. Um, but. With Usopp, uh, the 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 scene that I did like absolutely love, which like made the arc for me, because honestly, Syrup Village is probably the the strongest arc of the show. Uh, it's really well made. I love the horror movie atmosphere. Koro was spot on. I really like Kuro. Uh, but Kuro's this- actor mm-hmm. was like three D printed. From the manga, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> That's one like, of the things that I don't really love. Like if you about. Put, like if you Google Captain Kuro and you just picture that in live action, that's the actor. Yep. And like, oh man. They did that. They did that quite a few times. Oh yeah. Like uh, Kuro's like that. Um Zef Zef is like straight up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, straight up. Zeb walked out of one piece onto set. The fact that his mustache yeah. moves independently was like oh my god yes we'll get like, to that he takes off the hat a couple times but he wears the like 10 foot tall chef's hat yep um, um but uh, thing, by the way but yeah uh so uh the, the the scene that i like absolutely love and it's a scene that had me and cap dying of laughter was, was a scene that we don't get in the manga that all the fans have joked about. And again, this is how I know that the writers are actual fans of One Piece. Because, um, you know, Usopp is bragging about... He's like, oh, you guys are pirates. My dad's a pirate. Pretty famous one, too. Maybe you've heard of him. And he's like, and Usopp's like, oh, yeah? Really? What's, your, what's your dad's name? Maybe I have heard of him. He's like, oh, he's the great Yasop. You know, one of the red hair pirates. He goes, oh, shit. Your your dad's your dad's Yasa? Man, he was awesome. We hung out all the time. <laughs> we played He said I was like the son he never had. And then the, <laughs> just yo, Usopp's actor sold that so perfectly. <laughs> just that look of just de- pure depression and him just squeak uh... and him and him just squeaking out the Oh cool. cool. Oh, it was so funny. It was, it was, it was um, honestly, I think my favorite joke of the whole. Oh yeah, hundred percent, my favorite joke of the show. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, like Usopp's bluster is very good. Although I wasn't expecting him to full on murder Chew. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so One Piece very famously a um. A low body count series. Yep. Until you count flashbacks. Oh yeah. If it's flashbacks, then I kind of noticed. If it's flashbacks, then you know Oda's George R R fucking Martin in this bitch. 
So actually, what are the real funny mm. things about the about the Nianban brothers, as they were? Um, so uh, the gross one is the gross one, but the blue-haired one, mm. um, is also a weird, ugly guy. Yeah, it, it, it's like who the, wears it, like an ill-fitting shirt and it, has like a weird like gremlin body. It's the opposite dichotomy. You got the big guy and you got the overly lanky guy. Yeah. But in this one, they just make him a cat girl. Yep. Which uh, is fine. Uh, which is fine. But uh, A cat girl's fine, too. Yep, I'm, um, not, I'm not complaining. Uh, but yeah, Syrup Village was really strong. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I, 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 think it was, I think it was one of my favorite arcs of the show. Um, but not my, yeah. fa- not my favorite arc of the show, exactly. Because my favorite arc of the show is, mm. the, is the arc that happens next. Man, mm-hmm. the Baratier. Baratier. All right. Yeah. So, go new, ahead, guys. new viewers, new guys, take it away. How did you? How did you like the introduction of the best uh, I... pre-Grand Line crew member yep. and his introduction? I'm making. I... I'm making sure his wanted Want poster it. is blocked because there is a spoiler there. I love it. So. So much. Personally, for me, I really enjoy Sanji as a character. Mm-hmm. I think he of is so hilarious. It's not even because of the reasons that you think, Brian. I mean, that's why that's why I gave you Sanji's epithet in the uh, in the intro. I I, I feel mm-hmm. I, fe- I felt like out of the four of us, you're 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 the most Sanji, and that's mostly because you actually like to cook. Yeah, and it's the passion that this gentleman feels. That given his backstory, I really resonate with a character that had a. That has a father figure or just a parent that wants the best for their child, but does it in a very contradictory way. Mm-hmm. And I, I vibe with that kind of character story. And Zeth, fantastic. N- knowing that pirates can be any profession, just as a part of their sh- gimmick. Is always cool. And Zeth being someone who wants to put forth that ultimate sacrifice just to save a child's life, that's amazing. Uh, the Baratier itself is gorgeous to look at in terms of a set. Beautiful place. Love the look of it. And little things we see like. Uh, Zoro's fight with Mihawk. Mihawk's introduction was fantastic and very different from what you described. Well, from what you gentlemen described was mm-hmm. his initial introduction. They kind of added more and got rid of a, a, another character, but put it in with Mihawk's introduction. Mm-hmm. That kind of made sense. But just overall, the emotions that I felt with the Baratier arc just made me really enjoy this part of the season. And it's definitely the strongest of the season, bar none, in my opinion. Okay. Brian. I I vaguely know, knew about the Straw Hat crew. Like, I knew about the... Uh, the ones in uh, season five, no, season one, the season one, the five of season one, and see. the next two that are coming. I know about them, but at first, I will admit that uh, I did not recognize Sanji at first. We'll get but into that. We'll get into that. Once he, once he puts the suit on, yeah, for sure. And oh my god. He he was awesome. Loved his story, and just for the record, the reason why I said, "Of course you did," Tony, was just because out of all the characters in One Piece, he's the most like a character you'd play in a TTRPG. 
that's, but, a, uh, that's a fair assessment. Yeah, that is fair. But overall, it's just I love the oh, character yeah. that he goes on. I mean, how could you oh, not? Oh, uh, if you, oh, if you like his character journey here, buddy, buckle up. Just wait. From what, that from what backstory. Buckle up. Which, uh, which uh, I got to give them also cred for the visual department of, first of all, the two ships in the storm, and then the lonely rock. And then bravo to that kid actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is the, as we said, yeah, yeah. Kid Luffy, garbage. Kid, kid Sanji, great. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. That, that's why yes. I like. That's why I can't excuse. See, if all the kid actors were bad, I could excuse Kid Usopp and Kid Luffy, and Kid I forgot Nami. about Kid Usopp. Oh, can, uh, let me let me just mention that really quick. Can I just say that, like, in Usopp's backstory, when his mom just just dies out of nowhere, mm -hmm. I, this is gonna sound fucked up, but I burst out laughing because she just suddenly passes out, and all of a sudden, like Usopp's kid, uh, like kid Usopp's delivery is so bad, it's like, Ma mom, mom, mom. Uh, Wait, it's just like, kid, are you trying? Are you are you trying to do the Mufasa thing? Yeah. You're not trying. Stop it. Stop it. Because, because she was just like, she was just like, I'm gonna. The pirates are coming, and she's just like, no, they're not. He's like, yeah, they are. Ah. Yeah. Go by forever. It it sucked. Yeah, it's it it, it real press F. Uh, yep. Press yeah. F X. Yeah. Yeah, but uh. The but, Sanji yeah. art, though. Yeah, Kid Sanji, man. Great stuff. Yeah, man. and the restaurant, dude. In and out, gorgeous. Love, love, like you said, the fight outside. And everything. Only, only thing about that arc was just like the, uh, the Nami part was a little on the nose. Yeah, Nami's but... backstory suffered the worst from this adaption yeah. to live live action. Well, yeah, we'll we'll definitely get to that. Nami's probably the one that we'll, we 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 get we got to pick apart the most. You guys thought we were picking apart Zoro and and Usopp a lot. Oh, but... Men, not men, men are the are the cast and crew of One Piece live action Sanji Sanji fan. Oh yeah, yeah, they're yeah. definitely Sanji fans. Although I will say that uh, probably my favorite interaction with Sanji beyond the obvious mm -hmm. was uh him with uh, Nami's sister. Oh Nojiko? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no my yeah. my, my favorite okay, so my favorite Sanji interaction just to piggyback off of that before I start. My favorite Sanji interaction is uh the look on his face when Luffy writes the IOU and he says, No <laughs> sir, thank you. That was straight up Sanji. <laughs> He's that, like, and, uh, oh shit, Zab is gonna love this. Uh, that was great. I I love really love their take love on um Sanji's introduction. Yep. Where he shows up with yep. the uh, cheap bottle of wine, but he's got it wrapped in a towel. Yep. And the guy tries to pull the sommelier thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And Sanji's like, ah, oh, yes. And what does the sir? What does the sir, what does the sir think of the wine? Oh man! Oh, and then he just plants the bottle of cheap wine on the table and walks away. Yeah, no, it's it, um, it's great. Um, that's that's all classic Sanji. Uh, um, uh, what, 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 him cooking for Gein. Him um, cooking for Gein. Like I'm look. If they're gonna get rid of Don Krieg, I'm at least glad that the cooking for Gein scene was in there. It yeah. had to be, because that's what Asanji's big, like... Yeah, moments, yeah. Also, that corn beef... The, the thing beef... I don't like about that is it doesn't come back to bite him in the ass. No. he do... Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the consequence of cutting out Krieg, is that you don't get that, uh... You don't get the tragic Gein betrayal, because he doesn't have a captain to force him to betray Sanji, because he, he got murdered. Right. Off screen, yeah. which again, I, you know, to, to go back to Tony's point, I will say that shit was cool, and I love the use of Garp here to go back to an earlier point because 
Garp calling Mihawk uh, on Luffy makes more sense. A lot of people were like, Garp wouldn't call Garp wouldn't call Mihawk for Luffy, and Mihawk wouldn't listen to Garp. I'm like, actually, Garp would because Garp wouldn't want to put hands on his own grandson unless he absolutely had to, and Mihawk would listen to Garp because Mihawk respects Garp because Garp is fucking powerful, and Mihawk respects strength. Because uh, like. To, to put this in perspective for you guys, how strong Garp is. Because they don't really show it in this. Garp brought in Gold Roger. Yep. Those two were like Shonen rivals. Garp, Garp is endgame Sasuke. Yep. Like, he was the rival to the protagonist to the protagonist in the prequel manga about Gold Roger that doesn't exist. Yep. So he is he is full endgame strength. Um ah. mm -hmm. he's Garp uses ironclad ships as punching bags. Garp He he fought a living island punch and one and he 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 fought a living island, punched a mountain, which was the island's mouth, and knocked out one of its teeth. He knocked out several teeth. Um, Garp can punch and cause nuclear explosions <laughs> with just his fists. It's like, like if Garp and Mihawk got into a fight. Garp would win. Yeah, even 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 as an old man in his like late seventies, early eighties, Garp would destroy Mihawk. Uh, I wouldn't say destroy. Yeah. It would be it would be mid to high diff. Oh yeah, yeah, like, no, 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 yeah. Like Mihawk would put up a fight, but Garp would win. Garp would win for sure. Garp Garp would have some character have some new character defining scars, but he'd win that fight. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, back to, back to the, like the the other good of the arc though, um, Mihawk. Holy Mihawk, yeah. shit! Another another oh. ripped straight from the manga character. They got his facial hair right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you know how little I expected to get that Dracula looking motherfucker right? Also, I I they gave him the they gave him the 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 target eye contacts. They gave him the also the, the thing that I thing that I didn't notice uh, the first time, but when I when I had to watch it again to get Easter egg shots, mm -hmm. I I saw in the uh, Don Krieg phone call, he has the coffin boat. Oh, does he? He does. So for uh, for for you know new viewers and show only people, uh, Mihawk is. Obviously, vampire themed, right? He's vampire themed, mixed with the Spanish conquistador, uh, and his mode of transportation is a boat shaped like a coffin. No, it's not nice. a boat shaped like a coffin. It is a literal, like pine box wooden coffin with a with a dinky sail on it. Yep. <laughs> nice. like, it, it's not some like. Big boat shaped like a coffin. No, it's like a one-person coffin. Yep, with a, with a dinky little with, sail on it. Uh, and he uses that to traverse the Grand Line because he's and... just that badass. He doesn't. He doesn't need nice. nothing. Yeah, Mihawk. There is nice. there is nothing and no one that Mihawk is afraid of, except Shanks. Because, except like Sten Goku and Garp, but those guys are again. Those guys are last manga's big names, I but mean, that manga th doesn't mm -hmm. exist. This was a this was a mistranslation in the scans, but I still love the. Nope, I'm done. I didn't sign up for Shanks. Oh yeah, <laughs> I did. I didn't sign up for Shanks. Is one of my favorite things in One Piece. Yep. Um. Uh. I I signed nice. up for Whitebeard, but I didn't sign up for Shank. Yep. Oh man. I um, I do have to ask. Yep. Yep. Is that like Roman artificer dude in the manga? Roman artificer? 
the one that he's Mihawk's fighting in the beginning. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Don, Don Creek. Don Creek. Um, he's the main. So bad that guy, guy actually has a way bigger part. Yeah, he's the um, main bad guy of Baratier, Actually, he's bad, so instead of uh, instead of getting killed, he actually makes an escape. Yep. With just his like main crew, he and, used to have like a fifty ship fleet. But instead, he comes and up, then he ran into Mihawk, and he was dwindled. And Mihawk killed everybody because, but his main ship. Because he won't. Because he disturbed Mihawk's nap, and so he was like, "Because Mihawk mm -hmm. took a nap in his coffin boat as it was sailing through the seas." Mm -hmm. That's how little fucks he gives about the world. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so because of that, uh, Don Krieg able to escape. Um, Gin, the guy they they show up was basically is basically a spy. Ah. And so he gets the food from Sanji, who reports back to Don Creek saying, "Yeah, the Baratie will give us food." Because these guys sailed straight from the Grand Line back to the East Blue. Yep. Stopping, no stopping for supplies, so they're all starving and dead. Which, uh, mm -hmm. like, they don't they don't emphasize that as much. I mean. They do if you actually look at the map and the credits, but the East Blue and the Grand Line is one hell of a distance. Yeah. So, and then it turns into a whole big thing because um, uh, the Baratier actually like gets like severely damaged. Mm. So. And, and we and we instead all, of instead of also... uh, instead of Sanji just like picking up a couple of chairs that got knocked over at the end. There's like major repairs to the Baratie that need to be done. And we also we also get like uh. really cool scenes with uh, a lot of the other line cooks because all the line cooks are former like reformed pirates. So like there there's there's one guy that has a fucking cannon attached to his arm that he just fires at a bunch of Don Krieg fodder. It it's great. But I understand. I understand cutting yeah, the Yeah, they had to get over time. Um, the 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 black guy with blue hair. Um, the the main like head yeah, chef yeah. guy. Yep. He's got a way bigger role. Um. Yep. Uh. Here. Uh. Well, I mean. So, so it, it's it's a much in... more. And there's also there's also a lot. There's, there's there's more fights. Yeah, and like um and the Zoro Mihawk fight actually happens in the middle of the chaos of the Baratier fight. Uh. because like uh Mihawk uh, once once Don Krieg, once Don Krieg is uh, like being he sees that Don Krieg is being dealt with, he's like, "Oh, not my problem anymore, I guess. I'm out." And then Zoro stops him and is like, "Hey, you Dracula Mihawk, I challenge you to a duel." And he's just like you got balls, kid. All right. Pulls out a butter knife. No, it's his shaving knife. Oh yeah, his shaving knife. Which man. so it's it's just just like it just like in the show. He's well, got yeah. that cross necklace. He pulls it out, and there's just like that. He's, this is his little shaving knife that he uses to sculpt that magnificent facial hair. Oh man, yeah. the the, and... the Mihawk fight was great here. Yeah. Uh, Except for that very end thing where Zoro's sword oh, turns into CGI. Yeah, yeah, the CGI for the sword was terrible. But the fight itself, <laughs> yeah. the fight itself was great. But you know what would have like? I, I gotta really give the actor credit. Uh -huh. Swing around that big prop. Uh, what uh, Ichimonji? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. What are Ichimonji? Um, Draco Mihawk. Oh, oh, Yoru. Yoru. Yeah, Yoru. We swinging Yoru and making it look believable. Yep. Oh man, and I, I yeah. like, like you know, I I was dogging on Zoro a lot in in Zoro solo section, but I gotta give it up to the actor. He really sold the scene that is probably Zoro's most important scene, uh, in the East Blue, where he loses to Mihawk. He holds up his only remaining sword and is bawling his eyes out and says Luffy I will never lose again I'll be with you until the bitter end like man oh he, he's, I, he's I have sold, a holding back tears just he, thinking about it he sold that scene he really oh, did it was it was real good and like um, I know and like I know a lot of people were a little bit turned off by the fact that Sanji wasn't 
there to witness the fight because in the manga sanji sees the fight and that's what gives him the resolve to join luffy's crew because he sees that luffy has people on his crew that are willing to die for their dreams and it gives sanji the resolve however i like what they did here because in the show instead they have luffy begging for help to heal zoro and uh like it's luffy's dedication to his crew and then San sanji finding out about what happened to zoro that gives zoro uh gives sanji his resolve and i know a lot of people were like it's out of character for luffy to you know be like be all be like that for zoro and like hanging all up in his hanging all in his room shining his swords no it's not he cares about his friends he'd go out of his way to do stuff for his friends yeah. All right. Also, but, also, if you but, noticed beforehand, okay. uh, Nami gives him like a little bit of a verbal lashing. What was your butt cap? I'm not hungry. Oh yeah, that that was totally out of character. Oh yeah, that was totally. Oh, out sorry of character. for that is, a, that is a. That is a. A masquerade violation. Is yeah. the only thing if you're familiar with Vampire the Masquerade. Oh yeah. Um, um Luffy saying he's not hungry is a masquerade violation That's level offense. I wanna That is I, so I, out of character. I will I will give you another shonen anime related example of uh, of how out of character that is. It's like Goku saying, nah, I don't wanna fight. Like that's how I well, no, like, like is. All, all, all of your all of your main shonen protagonists are big eaters. Yep. This is this is this is Naruto saying, nah, I don't need any ramen. Yep. Oh uh, man. Yeah, that that was bad. But like the that that's the only thing that really bugged me. It's yeah, like but, but the rest of that was really good. The rest of that was really good. I, I don't know. I don't like everybody the whole I do like the Nami reading the Norin the Liar book. Yeah, I, 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 I really hope because I, I think that's a great. But they setup. made it so that the island sunk into the ocean instead of being in the sky. Yeah. Well, I, no, no, no. Well, it does, it does, it, it, like it drops from the sky first, and then it gets shot up by the knockup stream hundreds of years later. Right. Yeah. So. It's still correct. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was cool. Um, I and like Zeph doing his but, like cooking medical <laughs> training was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. And mm, then Sanji yeah. making rice balls out of the leftover fish because he can't waste food is a good. Yep. It was a real nice moment where he's just there making rice balls. Yep. And then it's like, what does he like? Uh, he likes rice balls and he likes beer. Did you soak the rice balls in beer? He's like, finally, somebody gives me something creative. Because that's, right. that's the thing that Sanji, that's the thing Sanji loves about Luffy, is that like Luffy is so simple, and Luffy will literally eat anything. That Sanji can do all these like weird experimental avant-garde ass dishes, and Luffy will be like, cool. Is there a lot of it? He's like, yeah, of course. Does it have meat in it? Yeah. All right. But yeah, um, it was great. Because uh, unlike Sev, Lucy, Luffy doesn't complain about what he cooked. <laughs> yeah. He's just glad that he cooked. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, oh, oh, also, fun fact. The, uh, the little beef dish that Zeph threw away that Luffy tried is a recipe in the official Sanji cookbook. Oh, is it? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, so yeah, Sanji Sanji's arc was definitely the best. Uh, my only tiny tiny fanboy gripe with Sanji. Why no eyebrows? Yeah. Why well, you have no eyebrows? No, no. Well, he well, had eyebrows, but it's why like, doesn't he have the swirly right, eyebrows? So, I know. The, that's the thing what... that really bugged me is um, uh, in in the so they change the opening title mm -hmm. for every t for every major character beat yeah which is cool mm -hmm. so uh -huh. when it's when it's when it's sanji's t 
title. They have the skull with the swirly eyebrow. Yeah. But he but doesn't. Not, not only do they, like, I understand for practical, like, reasons, they couldn't always have his eye be obscured by his bangs. They try. Yeah, they really do. And I'll give them credit for trying. And, like, realistically, something like that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I get it. But he doesn't have, like... So like, I'm, like Usopp's uh, nose, I can understand. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into spoilers, <laughs> but the swirly eyebrows are an actual integral plot point to later on. It sounds dumb, but it's actually it's actually very important. I think through osmosis, osmosis, I've heard a little bit of that, but uh, I won't say anything. But yeah, right. It's very but important. But it's, it's just, it's a very, it's a very iconic trait. It's, they have it in the title screen, but they don't put it on the character. You could have just used an eyeliner pencil. It's not like right. it's Usopp's nose where you'd have to make a, a practical effect that would probably look really silly on the actor. Or CGI mm -hmm. it in afterwards and yeah, make a bunch of mess, but. You could have just used an eyeliner pencil, man. That's all you had to yeah. do. Everything else about Sanji was perfect. <laughs> Except uh, the all right. So was it just me or was the 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 guy acting for Sanji have a weird? The accent was kind of weird. It wasn't quite British. It wasn't quite. It wasn't quite French. It's because he's uh, okay. So it's because he's uh, British. He's British raised but French born. So he's got that weird hybrid accent. Oh, okay. Th that's just like the actor. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard him in interviews. He talks like that. Oh, okay. Yep. So that wasn't him being bad at an accent. That was just the weird that, accent that yeah. he has as a yeah. person. That okay. Because okay. because that's what uh, that's. I don't, big... I don't want to. I don't want to rag yeah, on yeah, it yeah. if it's his yeah. real way of talking. Yeah. Because because that, because that's the thing that they did with the cast and Oda had Oda emphasized. He's like, all right, these people are from here. Get people from here. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess they mm -hmm. couldn't find a just straight up French actor that they liked. So, you know, uh, this guy was uh, Taz. I don't remember his last name, but it's Taz something. Uh, he's, he's Physically, he's yeah. Sanji to a T. Oh, yeah. Well, his head's a little his head's a little more rectangular. He's got a bit of the Moai face going on, but, but, but it but works. You can, but, you, but you can't have but you can't have Oda shaped bodies in real life. Right. But he looks good in a suit. He's got that like, yep. L like how the actor for Zoro is real top heavy. Yep. The actor that like that actor's body is very like. He doesn't skip leg athletically day. Athletically proportioned. Yeah, he does not skip leg day, Sanji. He's he's got he's got that track runner body. Yeah. Yep. It's not like weirdly lanky, like a like a marathon runner. Yep. But it's 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 lean. It's very lean. Yeah. Yeah. It's very lean. It's very muscular. It's, I could I could very much believe that he can do all these like crazy kicks and flips. Yep. And, yeah. And also. And he's handsome. And also, mm -hmm. Sanji calls out his attack names. Muton yeah. shot. Oh man. I I want to see that. I want to see them do the spin oh, for yeah. the Diable Jambe. Oh man! So another so another one of these little fun facts from the manga. So Cap talked about how Oda gives these dumb gag answers to some of the fan questions. So Sanji has a lot of fire-based attacks, right? And so a fan was like, "Hey Oda, why does San how is Sanji able to kick with fire?" And then Oda says, "Oh, that's quite simple, my friend." Uh, he he ignites his legs with the passion he feels in his heart. <laughs> it's it's the, fucking great. The fire, I was like, the fire of his soul burns hotter than the fire on his legs, so he's never harmed by his own flames. Yep. Um, oh, man. I love it. Uh, oh, also, no. hey, hey. So so if you notice in the show, when uh, when he's using the three sword style. He actually talks with the sword between his teeth, and it's kind of muffled. Yep. But it, they're yeah. like, hey, Oda, how come you never write Zoro's uh, dialogue boxes as muffled, even when he's using the three sword style? That's because Zoro speaks from his heart, so everyone can understand him. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, it's so good. 
Um, there, are, there are all these like ridiculous little things, and it's just like that's why that's why Oda's anime. The, yeah. That's why Oda's the best, man. Um, but Oda Oda is writing a do- so the best way to describe it is the way that he described it in the SBS, where it's like I drew and wrote One Piece for me, and it's it's insane that so many people like the story that yep. I wrote for me. Yeah, he's like, he's like. <laughs> Nice. I, I I just wanted to write. I I literally just wanted to make write a story where I threw threw everything that I liked into a pot, and mixed it together, which is literally what the One Piece world is. Like, if Oda gets a gets a wild hair up his ass or a new a new interest, he's like, oh, I have another idea for this island. I went to I went on vacation to Disney World. I'm gonna make a Disney World island. Yep. Yeah, um. <laughs> Oh, that man. happened, uh... But yeah. So... I've always liked Vikings, and Vikings are basically pirates. <laughs> yep. So, I put Vikings in the manga! Yes, it's not historically accurate, but this whole world is an anachronistic mess anyway. Uh... Man. He's... He is <laughs> completely unashamed. Yeah. Uh, like... one, of the best, one of the best SBSs was, um... Hey, Oda Sensei. Why do all the car- why do all the girls in your stories have big boobs? I like boobs. Uh, yeah, literally that was his answer. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> my, my 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 second my set my second favorite SBS is a more recent one where uh, a girl writes in and she goes, "Oda Sensei, you always talk about boobs." In uh, in these SBSs, but you know you never you never give the ladies their proper material. So which uh, uh which male character in One Piece canonically has the largest bust size? And he goes, oh that's easy, it's Zoro. His bust size is 300, uh, 355 centimeters. And if you look it up, his bust size is larger than Boa Hancock, who holds the record for the ladies. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, fantastic. Um, um amazing. Oh, man. So that was that was Sanji's that was thing. Sanji. It was real good. Okay. Now we get on to the most unfortunate arc. Yeah. So I, I was the I was live action for version reason. of Arlong Park, which is real unfortunate because it's for the, a long it, time it was the in best the arc of East Blue. Yeah. For a long time in the community, it was uh yeah, One Piece. W- just get to Arlong Park. Yeah, that's what. If ever- you don't like, if you don't like One Piece by Arlong Park, One Piece isn't for feel you. free to drop it. Yeah, but Arlong Park will probably get you hooked. So, and that was conventional wisdom for the longest time. So I'm. So I'm. Before before we let you guys talk about like your experience with Arlong Park, one thing I want to set up is I don't like Arlong showing up to the. Uh, to the Baratier and then kicking Luffy's ass because it undercuts his defeat to me at least because with that it doesn't feel earned because it just feels like well if you could beat him before why didn't you beat him there right because there have been been plenty of times you know later in the series where Luffy loses to a bad guy has to recover and then comes and bounces back and then gets stronger because he trains and then comes back with a new skill. That's Luffy's whole thing. But with this, he just got his ass beat. And then all of a sudden when he fights him again, he's handling Arlong easy. So, the the Arlong fight kind of replaces the Dom Krieg fight. Yeah. Um. One thing that I also really didn't like because it felt really on the nose is Arlong's fishman supremacy angle, mm-hmm. which does exist in the text. Yeah. But it's less in your face. Yeah. And also, what really bugged me is he goes on his big fishman superiority rant. And then there's a bunch of fishmen holding tiki torches, and it felt very like a modern day. Yeah, it, take that and see. I made you guys the bad guy in One Piece, and you didn't need to do that. Yeah, that was that that was that was a little too on the nose. I I I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that at all. Um, 
And I, I don't care where on the political spectrum you fall. You don't need to insert modern day politics into a story. One Piece it only well, makes One Piece only already makes has worse. One Piece already One Piece has, has its own politics, internal politics, and they're interesting. Yeah. You don't need to bring real world politics into One Piece, in general. Like, well, like, like, like that's the that's the other reason they changed uh, Nezu into a man who merely resembles a rat instead of being a beast man, so they could play up that. Fishman superiority angle, and mm. it just—it's so on the nose. It doesn't work. Well, I think it would have been fine if not for the fact of how much he calls it out. Yeah, yeah. That's and I mean that's what makes it on so on the nose is that he just keeps talking about it. Like he he only insults Nami for being human once in the anime and manga. He doesn't constantly Which, say human with a hard age. Yeah. Which I, I will say before giving my full thoughts about the whole mm -hmm. thing as a whole, him actually doing the human with the hard age mentality makes his uh, betrayal to Nami like more like seen that coming from yeah. a mile away and that's the other big issue because like up until that point Arlong seems like a dude of his word you know uh with with the with the backstory he honored it when when Belmare was like all right can i use my money to pay for my kids he's like all right and he let them live he kept his word the whole time and then you don't and then when the rug is pulled from under Nami, you're like, oh shit. Fuck. In this, you're like, why are you trusting this motherfucker, you idiot? Right. Of it course he Nami, betrayed you. It makes you're Nami human. look stupid. And, and Nami, Nami is yeah. like one of the smarter members of the crew. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's it's what it's what pissed me off about it. But yeah, go ahead, guys. We'll we'll get into our shit afterwards. I'll continue since I was already talking. Mm -hmm. Just go, go ahead. ahead and get it out, finish it. Yeah, sure. But uh, overall, I liked it. It has its problems. It's definitely probably the least of the arcs. But I will say that for the Arlong thing, I do kind of get it with his fight with Luffy. Because Luffy, if you go back in the first fight, he did grab some punches on Arlong. But that was until Arlong actually, like, sprayed him with the water and depowered him. So Luffy, realizing that he couldn't, like, actually defeat him himself, brought down the building around him. Which, I get what you're saying about him not training up for that moment as well, but I can also see where they were coming from. I, I like it, but it has its problems, but probably not as many problems as somebody who <laughs> knows the manga. <laughs> oh, oh, and real real quick, um, I know this was for a CGI, pro probably for CGI budgeting reasons, but I gotta say, I don't like that he used Gum Gum Bell to finish it and not Gun Gun Gum Gum Windmill. That's a whole, that's a big thing because Genzo is the one that tells him about Nami and his whole shtick is he's the pinwheel guy. But they right. gave the pinwheel shtick to Belmare. Yep. Which was, we uh, well, okay. Stop. I need to stop. Yep. I need to stop. Yep. All right. Yep. Tony. Sorry. Mm. Uh, what were your thoughts on Arlong, the Arlong Park arc? Arlong didn't come off as intimidating as a villain should. I mean, compared to Buggy, Kuro, hell, the time when Mihawk was an antagonist, he was far more intimidating than... Hey, Alvita split a dude's head open. Yeah. Arlong just seems like a real petty fuck. And even though the the makeup crew on this show did an amazing job with what they could. 
just the villain that came as a result just felt weak. Just very, very weak, at least to me. Mm -hmm. I I do want to add one thing onto that because you just made me think of it. Um, it no perks to the actor, but it's just like sometimes with these things you don't even need like big makeup or anything to be intimidating. I mean, case in point, if you go back to uh, Bloodhounds, the, oh yeah, Gil, the main yeah Gil in Bloodhounds. He looks like your normal average uh Yakuza boss. Korean like business guy though. Mm -hmm. He just looks like your average Korean business guy. But the air around him is he was even doing just mundane things and you could feel the intimidating presence. It's it's uh, I'm trying to find a good picture. Yeah. Um Um, All right, yeah, here's a good one. All right. So, since you guys didn't really watch, uh, I'm just going to post it in the in the Discord. Yep. A picture of what Arlong is supposed to look like. Go ahead and look at what Arlong looks like. For real. Oh, yeah. That is a far more intimidating yeah. character than what we got in the... Live action adaptation, and I and I get limitations of certain uh, certain things you could possibly do with. You just needed action. you just needed a suit guy, right? Yeah, but you you can tell just just from this picture the scale he's on compared to Nami. Yep, mm -hmm. he's a huge guy. Which is and okay, so the so uh, before I full on jump into rant mode, the thing that pissed me off most about this is the fact that the easiest fix of all is all they have to do is use perspective. They use all these weird fisheye lenses out of nowhere for no reason all throughout the show, and yet the one time you need to use perspective, you don't do it. But then in the flashback, you do it. So, I, so it shows that you knew how to do it, you just chose not to. Come on, man. What the fuck? All right, mm -hmm. so let me let me start by addressing the sea elephant in the room, okay? So, mm -hmm. in One Piece, the metaphor is clear, but it's very nuanced that fishmen equate to black people in America, uh, like or how how they were how they were treated back in the day. However, the live action show makes it way 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 too on the nose. Arlong has a gold chain in the flashback. He has a run DMC jacket and a Kango hat. His motif has hip hop beats in it. It's just like, all right, all right, yo. Okay, you don't you don't need to be doing all this. And all right, I so, think all or most of them are played by black actors. I I will I will say that flashback. Sun Pirate. Even just saying those words is a little bit of a spoiler, mm -hmm. but like, like the merch for Sun Pirate uh, does have that hat. Yeah. Like they didn't pull that hat out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. It 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 just it just it just, I don't know. Seeing it in live action gave it a di a whole different connotation for me, especially because he. Had, oh yeah. Especially because he had the chain. I think if he didn't have the chain, it wouldn't have bothered me. Right. Could you imagine if he had like a giant clock too? Fuck, man. But like in in the show, the only thing he wears is like a Hawaiian shirt and shorts. Yep. Like he's a vis like he is visually a metaphor. Like a like a little contrast to Luffy, who also only wears like a Hawaiian shirt and shorts. Yep. Yep. But all right, so let's let's go ahead let's go ahead let's go ahead and talk about this in full. Now. All right, so Ugh. so as as I said a long time ago, Arlong is literally and metaphorically the big fish in a small pond. 
Arlong is only scary because he's in East Blue. In any other of the blues, somebody would hand him his ass. Yep. And he kind of knows that in the manga. Yeah. It's all. It's also why he he avoid he avoids an old friend he, of his that he mentions, and like he, mouths he, off to. Yeah, he mouths off about Jinbei, mm-hmm. and that's a kind of nod. But he wouldn't say that in the manga. <laughs> he would. He might say that if it's just him and his fishmen around, but he wouldn't say that to a fucking rat man. No, because then Ratman, all, all Ratman has to do is call him up and be like, Cause, hey. Because cause that, cause that was the thing that pissed me off about that scene, because I know they have beef, and that was set up for that. But he would never disrespect Jimbei in front of a human. Right. Because like, as much as he doesn't like him. He's still a fisherman. Still, yeah, the, but, well, one, he's still a fisherman, and two, they're old friends. Yeah. It, it it it's like it's like you know your standard rules with your homies. Only I get to bully my friends, right? Uh, but yeah. So continuing, so it it creates a weird atmosphere. Mm-hmm. For one, he shows up to Baratier, and he mouths off to Zeph. And sure, Zeph's crippled now. He could still but kick Zeph his ass. was a big deal on the Grand Line. Yep, Zeph could have totally kicked his ass if he wanted to. Red, like, even even nerfed by only having the one leg, Red Leg Zeph could have beaten up Arlong. Yep. Like, the reason Don Krieg gets one over on Zeph in the manga is because he blasts Baratier with artillery. Mm hmm. Like, like, those little cannons that he pops out of his shoulders in the show that you see. Imagine that on a ship scale. Yeah. Because, like, Don Krieg's ship shows up and blots out the sun. His his whole gimmick is, like, being overly armed. Right. Like, he was, he was firing, like, World War I and II artillery pieces. In the 17th like, century half yeah. world. Yeah. And that, that's why Zeph couldn't stand up to him, because, you know... He didn't want his restaurant to be destroyed. Right. But just Arlong showing up at the, at the thing, Zeph would have kicked his ass. Yeah, Zeph could kick his ass in the water. Like, come on, man. It's, it's... It, all right, so this is a big problem. And I'm fully aware that this might be a problem because I'm deep in the sauce. Mm-hmm. I know One Piece. I... I even got into some arguments online over power scaling at some point. We all we all have. It's okay. We Kat. all have. We all have. It's yeah, it's it's unavoidable. But like Arlong's not that tough in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. So they try and play him up like, oh man, he's the final boss of East Blue. But the point of Arlong is that the crew has eclipsed the East Blue. Yeah. And they're ready for the Grand Line. Like, so, Arlong was was meant to be a very catharsis moment. Yeah. That shows, like, like Sanji easily handles his opponent. Zoro easily handles his opponent. Even Usopp can finish off the henchman by himself. Right. He doesn't need an assist. Like, the cow thing. I, did, they, did they skip the cow they fish? Did, they did skip the cow fish. Uh, so, there's a thing called the cow fish, which is very on the nose. It's a big fish with a cow face. Uh, this was their kind of ace in the hole in the manga, and Luffy made friends with it earlier. Because he has this weird innate superpower to befriend animals. Uh, Luffy's got weird empathy powers. It's kind of cool. Yep. It's, it's, it's hinted at early on, and then it's made explicit later on. Um, it's hinted at a couple times, but, you know, it's like... This man has the most dangerous power in the world. Friendship. He can make anyone his friends. Yep. Oh, man. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, like... Like, Arlong was a problem for Nami. 
Arlong was not a problem for the Straw Hat. The only reason they even bothered with Arlong was because they found out he screwed over Nami. And they wanted to help Nami and get Nami back. Ah. So it's just, it, it feels weird. Also, another thing that pissed me off about this arc that ruined, that ruined Nami's character in this arc for me. In the manga, the people of Kokoyashi Village are fully aware that Nami is working for Arlong to build up money to buy the village from Arlong. They pretend to not like Nami so that Nami doesn't feel guilty and that Nami so that if Nami just decides fuck these people fucking hate me fuck it I'm gone they want her to leave because they don't want Nami to have to be in this shitty village anymore so they they pretend to they pretend to hate her so that she'll go away and have a better life in this they're just assholes for like no reason it would be it would be different if Nami wasn't so obvious in the show that she's actually a good guy on the inside. If this was manga Nami, who was you know mostly bitchy to other people to everybody else, then I could buy it. But this Nami is clearly a softie, so I don't get why the people of Kokoyashi didn't know, and. That whole the scene whole the was... whole village is so weird because yeah. it's like I I don't want to come off as rude, mm -hmm. but in the live action version, Kobayashi Village is like a is like third world like thatched cottages. Yeah. In the manga, it's like a regular town. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a it's not a hugely prosperous town, but it's a town. Before before Arlong started stealing all their money, they were a perfectly average town, and Nami was just poor. I will say and, though, the one of the only pluses I can give to Arlong Park is the p actual park itself. They really do play up the amusement park angle of the Arlong Park set, which will be very important later. But you know, right. Hmm. That, I did. I did like that. I'm like, oh, hey, it's an actual fun fair. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the village is really weird. I, I, I don't, I don't like the fact they don't know, because they, they just come off like assholes. And right. That the, the thing that really, really bothers me is Nami's mm -hmm. sister. Yeah, because Nojiko of anybody should have known. She was in on it the whole time in the manga. Yeah. And it's like, oh, now you're now you're digging up your ill-gotten yeah. gains next to our mother's grave, you monster. I'm like, you, it's, it's all you forced shouldn't... drama. Yeah, they, they put it in here just to create tension and a sad moment for Nami when it didn't need to be here. Nojiko was her only friend. That was the, her sister was the only person she could confide in when she thought that the rest of the villagers hated her. But Nojiko kept that secret that the villagers knew because deep down in her heart, Nojiko wanted Nami to leave too because he, she wanted Nami to have a better life. And this kind of you ruins that. You kept this secret this whole entire time? And I fucking hate also, that trope. I hate I, that also trope. When she, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, when she like went for her, she was going for the kill and blow with that shovel. I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, like, like, and the fact that Nami just easily <laughs> forgives her after that, she literally tried to murder you, dude. Like, I would, I would want to have more than just a, I'm sorry to make up for that. Well, the problem is, is it's, it's the problem with how Nami was written in general, right? Mm -hmm. So with Sanji, they kept the same tone as the manga. Mm -hmm. In Zoro's flashback, they kept the same tone as the manga. Yep. For Nami, they added all this forced drama to it. Like, yes, in the manga, she was chained up and forced to draw maps until her hands bled. And they only they only let her stop because the blood was making smudges in the ink. And also, they put in another trope into the flashback that was not in the manga. The you're not my mom thing did not happen <sighs> in the manga. 
what happened was Nami got caught stealing and she says, I'm tired of being poor, which sets up Nami's whole greedy, money-loving personality. It makes it supposed to explain that. But instead, they do this, you're not even my real mom. Eh. No. Yeah, she's just, I'm sick of like, also, they added this, was, was Belmare a, an ex-marine in the manga? She is an ex-marine in the manga. Okay. Yeah. It, it's why it's why it's why in the manga Nami has a soft spot for kind-hearted marines. Okay. Mhm. Also, it's, it's just uh, the log I forgot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, a ni- I'm a, like, a, a nice a, a nice easter egg that they uh, actually included to to uh hint to that earlier when Nami's dressed up as a marine, she mentions she's from the division that Belmare was from. Oh, that's mm. that's cool. Yep. That's cool. Um, one little nitpick about it, though, also, is in the flashbacks flashback, where we see, like, baby Nami. Oh, that, yeah. Kid that Nami's wig terrible. Was... Kid Nami was terrible. <laughs> like, kid... kid Nami was terrible. Not, like, Kid Luffy bad, but on the same level of bad as Kid no. Usopp. I was talking about like baby Nami when she first discovers her. Oh yeah, yeah that that uh, wig, that wig is that wig. That, yeah, that wig was CW terrible. That wig was CW terrible. Not CW terrible. It was CW terrible, Brian. Don't even it try to lie to me. <laughs> I I don't know. It was just weird. Like I, I, it, it was it was it was all it was a lot of forced drama because it was the climax of the whole like. They they treat it like the climax of the series. Like when don't like don't get me wrong. Like I said, the actress did a great job selling the important scenes, and she wasn't the one who messed up the scenes when you know there was stuff that like really cut off the drama. That was Luffy. Luffy did that. That wasn't her. She. Of was course, good. I'll help you. And then they make an echo. And yeah. I, oh, I wanted to punch my TV. It was just so but, like which cringe. it's what uh, made it even more cringe was the fact that the scene right after was just so badass. Like I I I like I, after after this podcast, I want to show you guys the clip of Luffy save me, just so you can understand how the scene was played out. We'll watch it after the podcast, but yeah. yeah. Holy shit. All right. So, now that we've talked about all the arcs, uh we're going to go we're going to start with the newbies and say uh what was your favorite arc? Who was your favorite straw hat? Um favorite supporting character and then your uh overall rating. So, we'll start with Tony. Tony, you're there. Oh, no, yeah. You? Okay, cool. I, I was. Uh, I I thought you might have fallen asleep during our rant. Okay. So. No. Nope. Give a give us your uh, favorite straw hat, favorite arc, favorite supporting character, and an overall rating. You know what my first shit would be. Mm-hmm. The, the contest. Yep. Shazam and Bratier. Uh huh. Side character, I'd say Kobe. Okay. And overall, with uh, just the overall rating, I give this an eight, honestly. Okay. Okay. Just solid. I have no real big need to elaborate further. I, I just feel it in my gut. It's All a right. solid eight. Cool. Ryan, you're up. Okay, this might come as a little bit of a surprise to you. Uh, My favorite arc is the Brate arc, but my favorite of the Straw Hats is not who you might think. Oh, all right. It's the main man himself. Oh, Luffy. Luffy. Nice. But, uh, favorite supporting character... That one is tough. I think I might have to actually just go with Zeb. 
Zeph, yeah, Zeph is a solid choice. Yeah. Zeph is a solid choice. Mm-hmm. All right. And, oh, was that all you wanted? Oh, oh, uh, did you, your rating, duh, your, your, your final rating. Did Tony give his rating? Yeah, he gave it an eight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, as someone, I I really enjoyed the show. It has a lot of, like, points that we've noted out here and there. But overall, I really enjoyed the show. And so, uh, continuing tradition, at least with Tony, overall, I'd give it an 8.5. Okay. Uh, let me start. Let me start. Okay. All right. So, I'm... So I am lost in the sauce here. You can see my backdrop, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm not showing off the entire backdrop because there are spoilers in there, but you can see my backdrop. I love this fucking manga. One Piece and Hunter x Hunter are two of my favorite shonen of all time. And so I went into this expecting to absolutely hate it. I had drinks prepared and everything. I was ready to tear this show a new asshole with Cap in the Discord call. But I was pleasantly surprised. And me and Cap had the same reaction. We were like, I kind of hate that I don't hate it. And like, there, look, I talked about a lot of bad, right? But don't get that confused. This show has a lot of good. It streamlines a lot of stuff. Yes, it cuts out stuff that makes things a little weird. But a lot of the pacing issues are fixed. They make sense about a, about a lot of stuff that just happens. Uh, Luffy is a really solid performance about 95, 90, yeah, 90% 90 of the time. 90% of the time. Luffy is a very solid performance. Sanji. Fucking spot on, Usopp. Like he's about he's about a ninety five percent Usopp. And fucking uh, Zoro, he's like fifty fifty. He's got the body, he's got the snark. He doesn't have the cool factor yet, but I'm hoping that's a yet. I still have faith in this kid. I think he can pull it off in the future. Uh, but for right now, he's a 50-50 on the Zoro. Um, Nami. Nami, Nami, Nami. Cat, burglar, Nami. Why did they have to do you this dirty? Your actress looks the part so well. She pulls off all your outfits amazingly. Costume department loves Nami, but the writer's room hates Nami. <laughs> Because, my god, they assassinated the fuck out of her character. Like, it, it, it's so sad. Because Arlong Park, as Cap said, is the arc all One Piece fans say. Alright, get through East Blue, get to Arlong Park. Arlong Park should get you, and if it doesn't, you have my full permission to stop. They fucked it up. They fucked it up so bad. I just, uh, that, that, they really, they really missed the landing. If it wasn't for the Garp scene at the end, like, the, the, the end of the Arlong Park arc would have really tanked the show for me. So, at the end of the day, I'm gonna give it a 7. I was sitting on 6.5 for a long time, but then I really thought about how much this show is what, what, like leagues better than it had any right to be. So I I've got to I've got to give it its credit. So I'm giving it a 7. All right. Go ahead, Cap. Oh wait, Jay. Mhm. Mm uh, did you want to give your favorites oh, yeah, or yeah. no? Oh yeah, right. My favorites. I, I I can I can I can speed run this. So my favorite my favorite Straw Hat performance Sanji. Uh, favorite arc Baratie. Favorite supporting character Zef. Oh, I, you know shocker. I I, mm. I I went on and on about how this was the best arc of the show, and my and all my favorites happen in that arc. Uh, but yeah, those are all my favorites. 
Uh, go ahead, Cap. All right, so I'm a Sanji boy. I like Masaji. Sanji was done great. Sans eyebrows. But mm. if if a little costuming mistake is my only gripe, then it is what it is. Uh, I like the Baratier arc. Though I will say, I close second is the Axe Hand Morgan arc. They oh yeah, no that that is they a, really yeah. pulled out the stops. I, yeah. I don't think we touched on the Axe Hand oh, Morgan yeah, we, arc enough. We we did we did kind of skip over it. Uh, like I I think that one is really good because it's, yeah. it's a very it's a very forgettable arc in the manga and in the anime. But yeah, they they livened it up a bit. They made Axe Hand Morgan a little bit more enjoyable of a character. The actor who played Axe Hand Morgan did a fantastic job. Oh man! Even with his dollar store prosthetics. Oh man! Bare ass Helmeppo and the uh, haircut scene, fantastic. That yeah. was straight up Penny yeah. Zoro right there. Oh, that was great. Um, so fun fact, they actually did Helmeppo backwards. So the long hair, pretty boy look, he gets after the time skip, and the weird onion hair that Zoro gives him is his normal initial like. Shitty rich boy haircut. Yep. Um, oh. But I, I just, I just want to give props because I think, I think everything came together really well. Oh yeah. And it, outside and, and, of that, outside of that one scene where Zoro does a tactical roll and snaps Wadoichi Manji in half. <laughs> and it, uh, and like it really does streamline that arc because that first arc is really like the Axe and Morgan arc is really, really slow, like. And it's also where a lot of the, the One Piece wackiness is put on full display. Like, in the manga, Zoro isn't in the yard for, like, a couple hours. Zoro was in the yard for a month. And he was oh, still yeah. alive. Well, he's still alive because that... Because the oh, little yeah, girl the, kept oh, sneaking yeah, him oh, food. Oh, yeah, the girl kept sneaking him rice balls. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, it streamlines a lot. I love his office. His office is so cool and full of so many Easter eggs. It's great. It's, it's real nice. Like, there's a lot of little Easter eggs in the show that are really nice, but they're really hard to spot. Dude, as someone who had to fucking take screenshots for a video, man, that was like some of the most arduous work that I had to do. I am so glad that video made it past the client's uh, view threshold because I got a bonus out of that. <laughs> uh, man, that was tough. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of, like, little wanted posters. To oh, the wanted posters! We um... Oh, shit, we skipped over those, too. Foxy, yeah, yeah. Bellamy... Yep, but Jang also um, Django. whenever a major pirate showed up. Oh, they, yeah, I it, love that yeah. effect. Oh, yeah. I love their, that effect. Uh, their wanted poster showed up in front of them. Their bounty showed up in like big flaming numbers. And then they did like an attack on it that indicated their fighting style. Yep. And then the really cool thing when um, going back to the answers to the question you wanted, my favorite supporting character was Dracul Mihawk. And bounty oh, redacted yeah. or bounty canceled. Oh, man. That's, yeah, that's so good. Also, we said that we'd call back to it, but we never did. The like intro scene where you see all the people in the crowd. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, you uh, you get to you get to see you get to see young smoker. You see what appears to be Monkey D Dragon. Uh, you you get you get to see um fucking Shanks, young Buggy. <laughs> Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna address the one that people are speculating about because I think that's bullshit. I also well, think it's bad. Well, also I, I, we got to see. I don't, uh, I don't think they're right. Mm -hmm. We also got to see Cap's favorite supporting character too. Oh yeah, Mi oh, yep. yeah, Mihawk, Mihawk was, there. was there. Yep, Mihawk was there. Like uh, I, I, just, I, I can't believe they made Mihawk's costume not look like a theater kid. Yep. Playing pirate, pl playing pirate vampire. My, my only, my only gripe, and I guess it's because he shows up super late into the series comparatively to East Blue, but I wish they brought Joker. Like they had a cameo from Joker in the fucking execution. He was there. Oh yeah. 
I would have liked to see him at least show me the boa. Like you don't gotta, you don't gotta show me his face, anything like that. Just show me a dude turned around with blonde hair wearing a fucking flashy pink boa. Mm. Oh man. Yeah, he shows up. Well, he doesn't show up till the Grand Line. Yeah, he doesn't show. Yeah, he doesn't show up till uh, the the Jaya arc. Yeah, the yeah. end of Jaya. Uh, yep. Also, do got to mention that uh, the creator did say that uh, his biggest regret was that they couldn't come back to that city. Yeah, but they're they're coming back to it in the beginning of season two. So, no no big deal there. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, continue, Cap. Um, so, I liked a lot of things about it, and like you said, like, look, I was there for, I, I was there for Death Note. Yep. I was there for Cowboy Bebop. I was there for Dragon Ball Evolution. I was there for Dragon Ball Evolution. You poor bastards. I, w- I, was, I was there for I've M. Night Shyamalan Avatar. Yep. Anime debatable, but yep. Um, yep. I don't want to get into that, but yep. yeah, no, I've been I've been through all the bad live actions. <sighs> this one isn't bad, and it's even good a few times. Yep. But they had to make a lot of changes, and I guess as a super fan, that's. That like cuts in a weird way. It does. So it's like Garb following around creates as much problems as it solves. In like in a big picture sense, yeah. Like I can't not think of this big picture, which bothers me. I wish I could just think of this as the small little East Blue Adventure. Well, that's because, yeah. Well, that's uh, and you know I don't blame you for that because One Piece is such a big picture story. Right, so, and I'm, like, I, it's it's a very weird situation where my viewpoint on this is so it, it's almost alien mm-hmm. to what Brian and Tony have of the series. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> but also like j- 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 just to piggyback, I think that's one of the reasons why I gave it a little extra credit is because like you know One Piece is probably one of the most daunting series to get into and from what i hear what i've been hearing from brian and tony all night like it makes it seem like this show really does help people understand why people love one piece and i think this could actually get people to read and watch one piece like yeah no like i i have to give it all the credit in the world mm mm-hmm. Because this could have been, like, they messed up Cowboy Bebop real bad. Oh, yeah. And this is the same studio. And this is the same studio. They messed up, they messed up Death Note real bad Out, outside of um, William, William, William Dafoe Ryuk. Ryuk was great. Yeah, Willem Dafoe Ryuk was perfect. So William but Dafoe rest- Ryuk <laughs> was... Is was as good a casting as Zeph, as good a casting as Dracula Mihawk, as good a casting as that guy that played Garp. Because yeah. that guy looks like Garp. Oh, yeah. And um, the two... We didn't really mention this, but the the two existing... Um, oh, what's that guy's name? Which guy? The gangster-looking dude. Oh, Bogart. Yeah. The two existing Bogart fans... Yep. Finally got to hear him talk. I know. He's said more <laughs> words in this live action show than he has in the entirety of his screen time in the manga. And I I really like it because he acts like Garp's number two. Yep. He's there to do the stuff that Garp's too good to do. Yep. So he intimidates the low rankers for Garp. He does the paperwork. And it's great. Yep. Yeah, he does paperwork and stuff. It's great. I like Bogart. Bogart's real fun. Mm-hmm. Like, when I first watched it, I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to give this a one. I'm going to give this a zero. I'm going to hate it. They're not going to get anything right. But they got a lot right. 
Yeah. They yeah. they subverted my expectations. Yeah. In a way that I can say for sure. They subverted my expectations. Mm-hmm. And originally, I was a little bit saltier. Um, for hearing a newbie's perspective. Yeah, that, 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 that's honestly what turned me around. Cause like, from my from my salty perspective, as as a young co of the new world, <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out some terms the live action onlys don't know <laughs> just to fuck with them. Yep. Uh, as as a Yonko level One Piece fan existing in the new world, I'm like, oh man, this is garbage. This is bad. It's like a four or five at best. They got all these weird little details wrong, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just being that guy. Yep. There's, uh, there's a lot to love. They got... Like, I don't... I like that we got more time with Buggy. Oh, yeah. Like, that they, they, they used Buggy as a tracking beacon. Um, He hit his ear in Luffy's hat. Like, a, lo- a lot uh, of clever uses of Buggy. Yeah. Yeah, like like for every for every hour long, there was a good thing. Yeah, for every hour long, there was a buggy, there was a zap, there was a miha. Right, like like you can be you can be mad. Oh, you also, cannot like we, also, you cannot really like too much this. Kobe. Mm-hmm. You can you cannot like the weird chemistry between Zoro and Nami because I I sure didn't. Yeah, that was really weird. Um, like I don't, can, I don't blame the live act, live action only fans because like she was giving him the fuck me eyes a lot, and they had like a they had a couple of weird like their drinking scene where they're like they're like they're like playing like a college get to know each other game. Yeah, like uh, I I played that game with a girl in college. Yep, <laughs> like it felt also weird. Also like, with, mm-hmm. oh go on. Bro. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say with also with how distraught she was. Yeah, when the, the, he, he almost got, died. When he got hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah, like <laughs> look, like Zoro getting hurt, everyone just kinda was like, oh man, Zoro's in danger, but whatever. Yep. Uh I oh I am all look, I already said that the nose was okay to skip, but I am a little sad that we've missed out on my favorite gag. So in Arlong Park Usopp gets his nose broken by Chu, and so for the next two arcs, his nose is in a full body cast, and it is hilarious. It's great. Oh man, he's got he's got a little cast on his nose. It's hilarious. It's great. But yeah, um, one thing um, we didn't talk about much, real quick, uh, yep. is is the score. Oh my god, the score slaps. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Love it. Like. Like I mentioned it kind of briefly, but I love everybody's individual instrumentation and motif. Zoro has the traditional Japanese vibe to him. Luffy has this like adventurous Pirates of the Caribbean type bullshit, which is great. Sanji has this smooth jazz number. Nami has this loop on the third ass big band like theme. And of course they incorporate We Are in the important shots, which it's the One Piece song, you gotta do it. Right. And they even throw in dun 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. dun. Also, uh, we uh, we talked about it in the Discord call, and uh, live action only fans aren't gonna get this anyway, so I can just say it out loud. They include the Nika drum beat in there for you manga readers. Listen again. The Nika drum beat is in the score for Luffy's big moments. Yeah, but, it's it's layered it's layered a little deep, but I picked it up. Like like when we were listening to it, like Luffy Luffy's fight against Alvida. It's there in Luffy's fight against Alvida. Go back, go back, go back anime guys. Yep. And you can hear it. The drum beat of liberation has been incorporated into the beginning. It which has been retconned into Luffy's theme. Which? It's it's a little bit low in the mix. But if you got eagle ears, you can pick it up. It's a cool touch. Just, nice. just, just have a good pair of headphones, and you'll you'll be able to hear. Yeah. But anyway, Cap, back to what you were saying. Back, back yep. to what I was saying was um, I, I wanted to give it like a six. I wanted to give it like a five, but I can. 
I can only justify that as a curmudgeon. Yeah. Yeah. As like a as a salty twenty plus year reader of One Piece. Cause it, honestly, they're nitpicks. This isn't like this isn't erasing the manga. It's not to overtaking the anime. Yeah. It's a good jumping on point. The actors are clearly giving it their all. And and Keep... I and I watched the, a lot of the interviews with the cast, and they're all fans. Like not just the fake for the press. Oh yeah, I I, I love this series. No, like Nami's actor calls out stuff from later arcs that she wants to do. Right. Like. It's like it's so the, cool. Like the the guy who plays Luffy is a born and bred One Piece fan. Like to the fact where he met Oda Sensei and Oda said to him and his translator translated, "You are exactly what I pictured when I imagined Luffy in live action." And the kid burst out into tears. How, like, what else could you do? Like, oh man, it's so exactly, it's so genuine. Like, I I can't give it, I can't give it higher than a seven. Yep, I can't. That's yeah. The cur- I like the curmudgeon <laughs> in me is too strong. Look, man, that's what I settled on because I was like, I have all these problems, but it's they're nitpicks. This is a TV show. People, the important part is people who aren't into One Piece like it a lot, which means if we get the casuals, they can get a better budget so they can actually do this shit right for season two. Right. Because as it stands, this show isn't, this show isn't for the diehards. It's not. Like, they can say that as much as they want. The show, it's not for the diehards who are, who are deep in the paint, who are like rereading one piece with a magnifying glass to find the 300 page background character the, the 300 chapter ago background character yep. who's in this panel of the manga it's not for those guys there are one piece fans that do that quite regularly actually j- j- just to let y'all know just it's... to let y'all know i've got a magnifying glass yep <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> look i like i said i'm I'm deep in the paint. I'm lost in the sauce. I love One Piece. This one is really close it's, it's to the good. chest. It, it's, it's so close to the chest. It, I love that new people like this. Mm-hmm. And that it might lead them to the source material. Because the source material is so good. Yeah. It's daunting. Also, it's I, I want I to give any newbies out there that are listening to the podcast or watching some crucial advice. Two tips. One, the manga comes in box sets, and it's way cheaper to buy the box set. Because I'm actually buying the box sets next month, or at least the first two, and the first two box sets are the first 60 volumes. And those two box sets will only run you about 200 bucks. Now, I know what you're thinking. 200 bucks is a lot for comic books, but individually, those comic books cost $7.99 a pop. So you add those up, that goes to way more than 200 bucks. So if you're going to Also, these them... are these are mm-hmm. floppies. Yeah. If you're thinking about it. No, these are these are Tonka bonds. Yep. These are full full volumes. Full volumes. pages, mm-hmm. hundreds of pages. And the yeah, extra you're... bonus content in the back. Oh yeah, you'll get you'll get the SPSs, you'll get the you'll get the little fan art stuff. You'll get the extra drawings. I don't think you get the color pages. I you, think those are you, only in the. Yeah, they're only in the colored manga, yeah. Yeah, but and on the jump app. Um, and on the jump app, yeah. Uh, but... and, and also with the anime, do not watch the anime as it is. There is Google One Piece. One Piece is a fan-made project that is a streamlined edit of the series that gets updated every time an arc finishes. And it cuts out all the recaps, all the filler, all the overly extended scenes, all of it. It's the, it's the, it's the Dragon Ball Kai of One Piece. If you're going to watch the anime, watch nice. One Piece. Now, with the caveat, One Piece is a fan project. Mm-hmm. So, 
don't treat it as gospel. This isn't the way the anime was supposed to be. Yeah. And this is just a fan this is a fan project to try and trim the fat. Because One Piece is anime. And also don't don't take those don't take those subtitles at face value for One Piece either. Because a lot of those subtitles have biases in them because yeah. the 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 the, uh, well, the, the subbers <laughs> are clearly fans of certain characters more than others. That and um the the translation war between subbers, fan subbers, fans, and official translators. We don't have to explain that to you if you're online. Yeah, if you're an anime fan at yeah. all, like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't. It's not just a thing that applies to One Piece. Anybody who's it, into anime understands that struggle. Yeah, it's it's a lifelong struggle. Oh, yeah. But look, if you want to get into One Piece, pace yourself. Yep, it's a marathon. Not a sprint. You don't have to catch up. You can take take your time. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. It really read is. at your own pace. Take your time with it. I had twenty plus years to read this manga week to week. Yeah, like just for just for perspective, you guys. Like when that, I that, was but... catching up uh-huh. to One Piece, we were like. Alabasta was new. Yep. Uh, uh, we haven't got you haven't got to Alabasta yet. Live, 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 on, live action only people. You don't know what Alabasta is, but boy, will you? But yeah, to, to but, give to give other perspective, like uh, I, I like every millennial of our generation. I got into One Piece through the Four Kids dub. And in middle school, I had that moment of, "Hey, what was that dumb show with the pirates again?" Uh, I want to, I, uh. I, I want to check that out. So I caught up, and I got caught up in the middle of the Impel Down arc, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Live action people, you don't know about the Impel Down arc, but you you don't know about Alabasta, you don't know about Impel Down. <laughs> You'll you you no. will you will trust me, people. If this show I, continues I on an upward I don't, trend, I don't trust live action to do Impel Down. Impel Down is so cartoony. Yeah, but I, look, man, if they just play it as a prison break, as a prison break season with jokes in it, as long as they get the jokes. I'm fine. That would mean live action Ivankov. Oh wait! I don't want to. Oh, I don't want. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't I'm wanna... gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dodge Twitter for live yeah, action Ivankov. I, I, I don't want to. Hit... I don't. I don't, I don't okay. care what side of the political spectrum you're on. I don't care what current yeah. day politics you prescribe to. It's a character in the show. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. They, I don't want to hear. They're, they're gonna get hate from both. Mm-hmm. Ivankov's gonna get hate from both sides. Yeah. One side for Ivankov existing. One side for Ivankov. Making a joke of their existence, kind mm. of. Yeah. But it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Oh, well, boy. keeping with, with negative and things going forward, uh, just thought I'd bring this up, especially because we can't really do speculation. But uh, yeah, I want I want to hear you. You, speculate. you know what? You know what? Uh, well, I was gonna say outside of One Piece, just Netflix. Okay. You know what their next live action anime is. What is it? The story of Jesus Coon. Sword oh. art? Yup. I'm gonna complete Well I don't I don't like the sword art anime, so I'm just gonna skip that outright. Um, oh yeah. I forgot about the bleach I forgot about bleach live action. Oh shit. All you gotta do is drink all your milk. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh man! Also, oh man! All I, right, so so I discovered podcast that... people, podcast listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> go listen to the go Google, type into YouTube. All you gotta do is drink all your milk. You will be treated to English Japanese rap about the importance of your daily calcium intake and how it will make you the best fighter on the planet. Also, I I it's, did, it's I discovered best. I discovered that Zoro's actor was in the shitty live action FMA that Japan did. Mm-hmm. He was Scar. Oh, he was Scar. Uh, I watched shitty was... live action Full Metal Alchemist. Same. 
he's he's been in a lot of uh, live action anime stuff. Like most recently, he was in uh, Knights of the Zodiac. Yeah, they did. He was uh he was also in a Sentai season. He all and uh, and uh, he did. He has done voice acting. He actually voiced uh, in uh, the new Kaiji movie that's uh, that came out a, like either last year or two years ago. Yep. Uh, but yeah. So also, his dad is really well. It's famous. it's Sunny fucking Chiba. Yeah. Like, you know. The, like, you don't get much bigger than that. That's that's mm-hmm. that, that's why I had I had no I had no He's... worries about Zoro ha- being able to do do Zoro things. Oh yeah, like like overall at the end of the day, if you're curious about One Piece, watch it. It's good. Yep. Watch watch the watch the live action to to gauge your interests. Yep. If the live action grabs you, go go hunt down the manga. Go go read the Shonen Jump app. Go buy the mangas. Yep. Buy the action figures. Buy the model kits. Buy the merchandise. They have some really good if, model kits. If we ever get another low, like, uh, like another uh, movie month, I might have oh, to do the oh one Oh, man, piece. If, we, if we get to do a One Piece month, yo, I... Oh, I'll, man, Strong World, Film Z. I would be, I would be down for... I would Don't, be down they're for on that. Netflix. Yeah, they are. Oh, that's another. That's another thing I wanna. That's that's another thing I wanna caution uh, live action only people about uh, before we let Brian and Tony speculate. Uh, Please do not watch the uh, Netflix version of the One Piece anime. Watch it on Crunchyroll or uh, Mm -hmm. or put on your straw hat because the I checked the Netflix uh, the Netflix One Piece cut. And it is cropped to all hell. It is like the aspect ratio is not. It's built for '90s TVs. Oh, oh! Um, it's the real old yeah. version. Mm-hmm. No. So watch it. No. On, watch, um, it uh, watch it on Crunchyroll. They're, they're remastered which, uh, there. It's full HD. By, mm-hmm. by the way, the box sets. sad note. Animated. You just reminded me. Old school fans, be warned if you try to watch a uh, X Men Evolution on Disney Plus. It's like that. Oh, Ooh. that's rough. It's Ooh. bad. Um, yeah. but yeah. So Brian, all right. So Tony, Brian, speculate. Give me, give me some speculate. Give me your, give me I'm, your one theory. I'm gonna mute. Mm. You know, I just want to see Boa Hancock at some point. That's all I want. That's all I want. They got to they got to get a lot of juice to get to Boa. Like yeah. she's she's post time skip. She well, No, no, no. No, no. she I, no, she's right before the time skip. Because Amazon Oh, right, yeah, no. She she is on Shibodi, Am, yeah. Yeah, cuz Amazon Amazon Lily is right before Impel Down. Well, honestly, Oh, right. No, no, no. 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 That's mid time skip. She's that that arc is during the time skip where everybody else is having their own individual adventures, yeah. Yep. That is all I want. Just and it. honestly, with the craziness of this show, it's you know me, Jay. I can predict shit with TV. So, oh, this so, is harder. So one thing, one thing I want to ask Brian. You mentioned before that you are at least familiar with the next two crew members that are coming. How do you think this show will handle those crew members? Well, one of which I've I've seen it before in cosplay and stuff. You can do with just a dude in a full body suit. You just gotta play up like the black parts and man, that like sounds make real it bad kind of context. That sounds yeah. real bad out of context. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Brian. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Brian, but boy. Boy. I know, <laughs> a, I know. That's a big oof for me, dog. Yeah, it it wouldn't be a Channel Chasers episode without me walking into something. <laughs> but 
what I'm what I'm trying to say is uh like you see in some of like the De los Muertos stuff. Mm-hmm. Like play that up. I could see it being and the other one you probably either gotta get a small person to come in and make some visual changes or if you have the budget I could see maybe going the Grogu method for some of it but that would still be a lot of money and I don't know if Netflix would want to do like a full on puppet so I I said it before they already have an existing contract with the Henson company because the Henson company signed on so that they could get the the new Dark Crystal on Netflix. So that relationship exists. True. I got a bad so, feeling it's gonna be a CGI gremlin monster that haunts my nightmares. I hope not. Dear God, please no. Nightmares. It could be. He's the merchandise darling. You can't fuck this up, man. Yeah. 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 But Nico Robin, I'm looking forward to because I, I would like to see her. Look, Nico Robin is the character I'm looking forward to the most, but it's also the character I'm the most afraid of now that I see how bad they messed up Nami. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm worried about my favorite straw hat. Well, yeah, your favorite straw hat is the mo- is like second only to Chopper, the most likely to have nightmare fuel. PGI. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's how how would I... his arms? I've seen cosplayer do his do his arms and they look fine, but it will definitely not be super whatsoever. It, yeah, I um, think I'm I... not feeling too stupid <laughs> ah, oh, about man. the future. I don't know his. Hat. I don't know his name, and I don't know his personality, but I think I've seen an image of who you may be talking. About. You've seen the pose. Uh, I got a, a, yeah. an Olympic athlete who is a, a huge One Piece fan did the pose at the podium in the Tokyo Olympics. I saw it. It was so good. It was so validating as a as a fan of this particular character. Yep. Uh, his, his post time skip appearance is a crime. It is. It's so sad. Uh, but but anyways, uh, we hope you enjoyed this very long very bloated podcast episode if you well, did... still not as long as our uh, oh, yeah. daughter, your father that's true if you, if you mm-hmm. dipped out halfway through or you just started doing other things in the background and just left this on do not blame you whatsoever this is what happens when you get two one piece nerds in the same room and tell them you can talk about one piece I mean, Jay was going so fast, we had to, like, pump the brakes a couple times. Just be glad this wasn't a fate thing, because then we'd have three people. And uh, and then the episode wouldn't end. Uh, Yeah. Um, But anyone who is still watching or listening... I know I am. Guest star cap. Thank you for putting up with me, loyal listeners. Um, I know it can be a bit of a curmudgeon. But it's it's from I want you guys to know it's from a place of love. It really is, man. Well, hey, you scored h- higher than I thought you were, and you tied with Jay. Yep. I mean, we we had we had a lot of the same thoughts. Uh, but yeah, we only have, uh, like highest the highest score here was Brian. Yep. I was trying to like give him more. The egg was me being more measured. Man, with just the knowledge that well, I have. I, I just have to say, if you're on YouTube and you watch this until the end, leave a comment because I tip my straw hat to you, sir and or madam. <laughs> yes. Because this was a journey, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. This was it. a triumph. Uh, <laughs> so you've made you listeners. You have made it to the grand line. You have. Enjoy the rest of the adventure. <laughs> So, Brian, speaking of adventures, what are we covering next week? Go ahead and tell the audience. Well, we're 
instead of doing something that is based on a Japanese piece of media, we are covering, I believe it's Japanese, piece of media. A live-action movie coming to Netflix from, I think, Japan. Uh, sorry if I got that wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. Called uh, Once Upon a Crime. It looks oh, to be that's, a... That's a good name. Mm-hmm. It looks to be a fairy tale reinterpretation, amalgamation, live action. So, so Cap, I saw the trailer, and the, the best way to describe it is, what if Fables was, like, set in a world with Yakuza, instead of Ooh. your hard-boiled noir detectives? That sounds good. Yeah. At least that's the vibe I got from the trailer. I haven't watched the film yet. I, I can't get over Once Upon a Crime. That's such a... Oh, it's a great that's name! A, that's a banger it title! It is. Mm-hmm. No, it certainly is. I want, and it definitely matches what you were saying, Jay, of... I want that to if be the title of my autobiography. Fairy tale. Mm-hmm. If it's Fairy Tale Meet Yakuza, that is the perfect name. Oh, man. It, Once Upon a Crime would be a good name for a JRPG. Oh man! Uh, but yeah, so look forward to that. It's an it's another uh, movie episode, so it will not be nearly as uh, drawn out as this. But again, thank you for putting up with us, me and Cap specifically. Uh, oh yeah. But we'll catch you guys later. It's time for us to drop anchor. We'll see you next week. Later, y'all. <laughs>